Oh, hey, everybody! Phew! <coughs> oh! Oh, I was feeling pretty bad there. Oh, I've been kind of sick lately. Sick of being broke. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Oh, we're at 1902. Thank you, everybody, so much for bringing me back to life. Thank you. Ran out of juice, man. You know, it just sometimes it happens. I'm so sorry. I was just so tired. Thank you, Yoplin. Thank you, Rhubarb. Thank you, Yars, you gifted. Thank you, the Seinfeld himself, too. How nice. Who turned on the stream? I did. I'm like a car. I can turn on the stream, and that requires a certain level of activation. And then once that's active, I like I, I the 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 alternator has to flip. If my alternator doesn't flip, then I run out of juice. And it turns out that my alternator is powered on 1,900 subs. Go figure, right? Of course. Yeah. Wow. Tough. The past is in the past. Tonight's the night. Five people unsub and Coney just dies? Yeah, listen. If I drop below 1,900 subs, we're going to have a problem. <laughs> I'm going to idle out. <laughs> if, I, if I get... If I somehow decay in the moment, we're going to have a problem. Cody, first time commenting, can you take your hat off real quick? Do you think I'm bald? Is that what this is? Do you think I have no hair under my hat? I'm not gonna take it off. I'm not gonna do it. I don't, I, I'm not gonna acquiesce to this. Insane. Insane that people still think that. You know how many people think that? How many people have said something similar? Not enough subs and he deactivates. Too many subs and subula takes over. Yeah, it's a very fine balance. It's important to keep your id and your ego in check. Ooh. I would be so ugly bald. Thank God I'm not bald, dude. I do not have... The face or the head shape to be bald. I'm fighting for my life as it is. I'm ugly with hair. True. That's what I'm saying. What am I going to do? You know? What am I going to do? Ugh. Ugh. Might be a shorter stream tonight. Like normal stream hours, you know, till 11. Just not crazy long. I'm beat, man. This this thing's kicking my ass, whatever I have. It's tough. Thank you, DKGM. Big thank you. Any merch plans? Yeah, it's in the works. Uh, I've got a guy who has made stuff in the past that I've really liked that I'm going to work with. He's busy right now. We were supposed to do it before. Like, the holidays, you know, but... Yeah. He was a little busy, so... Tonight, we're going to take it easy. We're going to watch some YouTube watch some some videos that a lot of you guys submitted from the discord and the watch this video channel i see yars is <laughs> moderating it as best he can that group that poor that poor channel sub coney love the podcast listen to it all day thank you yeah we recorded three episodes the past two days one of them got a little out of hand i'll say that <laughs> One of them, one of them is not our proudest moment. You'll see. It has a very funny title, but the episode itself is not great. But, you'll see.
hear anything about Genesis. I cannot tell you that. I can't tell you. Maybe. Perhaps. Nice color scheme. It's black. I just threw on the first long sleeve thing I could find and the closest hat, which beat out two other hats. Because I have hats fucking everywhere. Bro, I'm big into Space Channel 5. I don't know why. I fucking love Space Channel 5, bro. I want to play it so bad. Thank you, Tundra. I want to do that Dreamcast night with uh, Space Channel 5, Crazy Taxi, Jet Set Radio, but charity thing uh, fell out. Do you wear a hat because you are balding? Mobile moment. This is mobile as shit. What the heck? What are you talking about? I saw somebody yesterday. Somebody pointed out that, <laughs> you know, Kirby came up on the stream. We were playing Kirby's Adventure for the Nintendo. And of course, the game begins with, first you draw a circle. And about 15 minutes later, somebody in chat said, first you draw a circle. I was like, that poor person. That poor guy is getting buffered constantly. That poor person is watching me hours behind. That's so sad. But the button is so fun to hit. Thank you, Enrage Leaf. Use your Twitch Prime. Yes, please. Bro, I'm under 2K subs. You know how embarrassing that is for me? If Jeff Bezos comes in here right now, I look like I haven't been working. I'm gonna get in trouble. Look like we're just dicking around watching videos. Bro, did you know people are watching movies on Twitch.tv? Did you guys know that? I didn't know that. Bro, people are actually watching movies. Fucking, apparently Mizkiff was watching Home Alone 1 and 2. What the fuck? Is that true? He was straight up watching Home Alone. Can you do that? Thank you, Mikey SB. Do so did Connor Eats Pants. Bro! What the fuck am I doing watching YouTube like a, a fucking moron? Dude. Ms. Kiff can, but you probably can't. Ms. Kiff is way more visible. What do you mean? I'm flying under the radar. I should be way easier to get away with that. I'm watching movies, bro. I'm watching Jingle all the way. Who's gonna stop me? That movie's gotta be public domain. That was the 90s. It's turbo time. He got two! <laughs> I love that movie so much. Can we watch the Mario movie? Dude, do you guys remember that small period of time where I thought we could legitimately watch the Mario movie on stream without getting in trouble? <laughs> It was like four days, <laughs> but I really thought I could do it because it was on the internet. I really thought I could. I was so excited. I want to watch it so bad. Mm. And then I got taken down. You probably still could. It's not Home Alone. True. Yeah. I'm positive I could watch Kung Pao. Right? No way Odin Kirk would sue me. Right? Thank you, Black Ace Solo. Man. That's tough. Thank you, Shark Depress. You can hug bees. Watch on Twitch years ago. I'm not going to ask you who hug bees is because it's going to be some. It's going to involve some. I'm going to get. Like me. Kung Pao is free on YouTube. No. No way it's not. It says buy or rent, dummy. 
it's literally not free. <laughs> I, I, you, you were, you were immediately vanquished. Did you think I wouldn't search this? It's right there. It, of course, that would be the first thing that I did, is to see if you're lying or not. What the fuck? It was free. To who? Not to me, certainly. Stupid. I don't get to watch Kung Pao. Lying on purpose, yeah. It's one thing to lie on accident, but you really thought you would get away with it. I want to play Space Channel 5, bro. I love this fucking game. It's so basic, though. That's the thing about rhythm games, is they sound so fun, and then you start playing them, and they're kind of basic. You know? I played Gitaru Man for one level, and I was like, okay, I'm good. <laughs> Those levels are long. Gitaru Man is such a long game. I did love Rhythm Heaven. God, I want to play Rhythm Heaven, too. I wish there was a way to play Rhythm, Rhythm Heaven again. The Wii one. Because I'm not playing DS, you know? Dreamcast does not have a single game that has aged well. I would argue Jet Set Radio aged pretty well, right? In that it's unique. Right? Crazy Taxi? Nah, I don't know about that. JSRF better? Did you know there's no way to emulate JSRF? I've tried to find it. Maybe there is now, as of a few years ago. I wanted to so bad. I've always wanted to play JSRF, but no. Wait, it is possible? What the fuck? What? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> really? Why did I think you couldn't do that? I thought you couldn't. Oh, shit. I didn't want to play that then. Oh, I lied on purpose. No, I lied on accident. I did not lie on purpose. Okay, the last time I looked was a few years ago. Good. Okay. You guys want to see a video I found on the internet that I liked? Okay. Now, I didn't like the music, but I tried so hard to find this clip somewhere. I tried so hard to find this clip. And then I realized that monkey is probably not wearing clown makeup in the real clip. He's, it's, it's probably just a regular monkey. But that might still be funny. Johnny Carson laughs at monkey. Oh. oh. <laughs> this is why I couldn't find it. The fucking video says guy. <laughs> they don't know who that is. Guy laughs at monkey uncontrollably. That's Johnny Carson. That's why I couldn't find it. Oh, sure. And he'll laugh if you laugh at him. He's <laughs> 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 His ass is not laughing. 
<laughs> okay, you're all choked up about this. Okay, I don't know why I watched this. It's crazy that you could be on TV for like 100 years, but in 30 years, you'll just be that guy. It's so sad. The most famous person on the planet, like 50 years ago, right? Probably doesn't matter much now. I mean, at least in the, uh, in the entertainment department. Like, how many kids did I know who Fred Astaire is? You know what I'm saying? Society, bro. <laughs> Orson Welles is a good example. Orson Welles is a good example, too. There you go. Marlon Brando, you know. Okay. First things first, I need to watch this movie. <laughs> I have to watch this movie. So for background, uh, this video came up during React Wars. Uh, it is about the plight of umpires in baseball. And uh, I had to watch the whole thing. I had to. I can't not. I don't know what the conceit of the video is. I have no idea what it's about. But I, after watching a few minutes of that, I had to watch the whole thing. So... Apparently, this is from a channel called Baseball Doesn't Exist, which is a great channel from what I've heard. But I'll be the judge of that. I just want to see if they cover the mount, <laughs> the plate in dirt, which is the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I love that you can do that to piss somebody off. That really gets the umpire's goat. Baseball is a culture unlike any other sport where it is... Baseball is a culture unlike any other sport where it is almost completely accepted to treat officials as subhuman creatures. Do it again and I'll knock you right in your nose! There are countless examples of managers, fans, and players screaming in umpires' faces, throwing <laughs> equipment on the field, kicking dirt on them, and physically assaulting them with almost zero consequences. Can you not do this to a ref? Can you not do this to a ref? Like in football. If you do this in football, you can't do this? Why not? You'd be suspended. What the fuck? Why do they take it? Umpires are bitches. Babe Ruth once walked off the mound, punched an umpire in his face, was escorted off the field by police, and was only suspended 10 games. <laughs> umpires have been beaten, spit on, yelled at relentlessly, and even shot while doing their job. Shot? But to some, this type of treatment is justified. With a gun? Because umpires may be the worst officials in professional sports. According to a Boston University study, home plate umpires make the wrong call over 12% of the time. Oh Just my god. 15 calls per game. The best ones are rarely chosen to umpire in the league's biggest games, and the worst ones are rarely fired. Umpires themselves have been punished for beating up players, beating up fans, and injuring Dude. players on the field. Dude, wait, so you're if an umpire, you could just be wrong 12% of the time, and that's okay, on average. So there are others that are, like, there's got to be an umpire that's wrong one-fifth of the time, 20%. Easy-ass job. Easy-ass job. I could just guess. That's crazy. It's also got to be the hardest job, right? I feel like that's way harder than basketball or football refing because you got to make a split decision judgment based on something that you saw coming at you from like a hundred miles an hour that's hard dude and people need your answer immediately you can't even think about it oh okay never mind i feel bad but soon the hardest part of the job is staying awake while watching all that baseball true they should have breaks soon, these umpires may be extinct these poor but guys who are the league's best and worst umpires are joe west and angel hernandez really that bad why baseball has a history of blatantly promoting and encouraging umpire abuse and is the technology that will soon replace them actually better wait so is this happening are they getting rid of umpires now like with robots is that actually happening because i thought i heard that but I didn't know if it was actually going off or, or whatever. Soon, kinda, kinda, they're testing it? Okay. Bro, you're, you're taking away the soul. What about the soul of the game? That's not, that's not. You okay. gotta give us a shot. Come on, bro. You gotta give us a shot. Look at your f***ing report. You little f***ing squeak. 
They can't yell at a robot. The robot won't get his feelings hurt. Major League umpires get treated on the field worse than any other official in sports. And this is actually by design. Today, if you throw your hat at an umpire, cover home plate I, with dirt. My favorite move. Third base, my favorite move. Army crawl to the mound, pick up the rosin bag, and throw it like a grenade, then steal second base and literally walk off the field. That's like my fucking guy. Did, you will be suspended three games. If you pick up your bat and throw it across the field directly at an umpire hitting him in the chest like Delman Young did, you will be suspended 50 games. Directly at Bro, an that would hurt! Well, okay, never mind. It did hit him in the chest. It looked like it got him on the, like, the chin. Or on the head. This isn't that bad. A <laughs> bat being flung at you by a professional athlete. Not bad. Doesn't hurt. They're hitting him in the chest like Delman Young did. You will be suspended 50 games. But if you did either of these things in the early days of professional baseball, you would probably get a raise because abusing umpires back then was not only accepted, it was blatantly promoted by teams, the media, and league officials. Oh my God. Jesus Christ. Have you a cough and tend to it in time. Taylor's whorehound balls will cure you not out says the umpire <laughs> he's very silly is his penis out no that's a stopwatch right i can't tell what that is i think it's probably a stopwatch not a stopwatch what's the word the fucking the fucking the the Pocket watch or his penis for the sole reason it's a watch it for sure attendance and added to the fan experience Bro, what the fuck happened here? Everybody hates that umpire <laughs> One umpire pissed off this whole crowd Jesus in 1903 a player was shot by a fan of the opposing team to prevent him from stealing second base <laughs> He was carried off the field and died on the sideline, but the two teams kept playing in the eighth inning, the umpire made a call that gave one team the lead. A fan on the other team shot the umpire three times, started a brawl, the two killers ran away, and the game was canceled. In total, from- Bro! I'm not playing at that stadium ever! Does that state- Does that team still exist? If that was like- the Minnesota Twins, right? I would never play in Minnesota again. Getting fucking shot for trying to steal a base. I guess that's like standing your ground, right? It's like, this is my base. You can't have it. 1899 to You're defending your property. Eight umpires were murdered by players or fans for making controversial calls. And it's your base. And although in a major league game, umpires were frequently chased by angry mobs of fans after games for making bad calls or just any time their team lost. Oh my Similar god. Similar to what happened to Laz Diaz in a game in 2003, but this guy was charged and sent to prison. In the early 1900s, police often made exceptions because in some places, umpire mobbing was just seen as part of the game. This happened Dude. so much in amateur and minor league games that local police chiefs issued orders like this one made in Virginia that required police to start protecting umpires from these mobs. <laughs> umpires were not only required to enforce the rules, you need a specific they were law for umpires. Themselves. If they couldn't, they were fired. Fans like will John be fans. Conway, I guess so. What can you do? Career of all time. His first year as an umpire, he was assaulted by a player on the Cardinals. Two months later, a different Cardinals player assaulted him, causing a riot and police <laughs> escort. But the umpire was actually the one who got punished, and after the season, he okay. was fired. He went to the Eastern League, where a player was arrested and spent 10 days in jail for kicking him in the chest. Less than a week later, he was mobbed by fans after a game and had to be escorted by police to the train station. What? Soon after, only three years since he started, he quit umpiring for good. Good! And being able to fight would not only help you survive, it would get you a promotion. Hold on. Two hundred and thirty five thousand dollars. Is that factoring in the abuse that you get? 
Do you think that's like that? Like a big part of that has to be you're gonna get spit on and yelled at, and they're gonna cover your home plate in dirt, and you're gonna have to clean it. Major league starting salary is 120k. Damn. That may sound like a lot for what seemed to be six months' work, but the umpire sees it as longer than that with spring trainings, all-star games, and postseason. I guess. Fuck, dude. I want to be an umpire. Just How hard could it be? Major Kurth, who during six years as a minor league umpire, broke a player's I'll learn how to fight. Fist, punch a different player in the face, was assaulted by that player's teammate, I could guess. Fought a manager uh, after strike, a game I think. underneath the stands, punched a fan in his face after the crowd rushed the field, and once showed up to a player's hotel room to demand an apology. When the player refused, he beat him up and was sentenced for assault and battery. Oh the my god. next year, he was promoted to be a major league umpire. <laughs> four World Series, two All-Star games, punched Dude. a shortstop in the face, was beaten up by a fan who rushed the field, was spat on by a player, spit on a player, and once entered the stands in the middle of a game to punch a heckler in the face he what is going on in baseball dude due to leg injuries the days of umpire mobbing and umpire assault slowly faded starting at the turn of the century but managers fans and players screaming at and intimidating umpires is it the roids they could remains rampant and to large part accepted by everyone in baseball in 1996 roberto alomar spit in umpire john hirschbeck's face after he made a bad call alomar was only spit in umpire not john very Effectively, though. I'm not seeing much there. That was a light misting. I thought there'd be like a glob, you know? After he made a bad call, Alomar was Three only games. suspended five games. Yeah, that's Umpire fine. Shag Crawford once was so fed up with a manager and player, he started the game while getting screamed at. Called a strike without anybody in the batter's box. I love this the image. Manager and two other players then tried to get swing. The Everybody box. swing. Another pitch was thrown above <laughs> the players' heads, and Shag Wilson called the pitch. A Bring in another the batter. Three batters. <laughs> once ejected Bobby Valentine for. Arguing. I love that shot, Valentine dude. Valentine had so little respect I love for that. his authority. He put on sunglasses, a fake mustache, and came back into the dugout. Umpire Bob Davidson even had to throw out a mascot for annoying him and the players during a game, which isn't even. Bro, had this to dude's just trying to sleep. What could this guy have done? <laughs> He's probably snoring really loud. This thing probably snores like a like a like a log. You know what I mean? Why is he looking at me? <laughs> Can you believe this guy? To throw out a mascot. He watched baseball for 0.2 and seconds and passed game, out. Which yeah, this question, is me at the game too. Anybody want I show to up like this too. Umpire. And many people would respond by saying that they can get shuffle my nightcap in my pillow. Dollars a season. I sleep first class to every game, and due to a corrupt system, even if they suck, they will not only never be fired, but in many never? cases be promoted to call the most important playoff and World Series games. But the path to becoming a major league umpire is extreme. Video specifically about this mascot feud. <laughs> Here's what I know about. Okay, I don't. I listen. <laughs> I need to see this. I don't want to get sidetracked. We'll come to this after. I have to see what that that guy did. <laughs> I'm curious. Extremely miserable. First, you I'm need so to go curious. to school, which is required by MLB. What we do is take a baseball and we throw it into your face. It costs around $2,500 to enroll. The course lasts three to five weeks. Oh. Where students go to class, listen to lectures, take tests, exercise, and get taught how to get screamed at by managers. Those who That's finish not bad, bro. Their class go on to the next evaluation, where they are graded for a week. The best umpires at this course will be rewarded with the opportunity to become a minor league umpire. Where they're on the road the entire season, required to drive themselves hundreds of miles to get to each game, oh, staying never in a hotel every night, making around $60 a game, and being abused by players, fans, and managers on a regular basis. Okay, never mind, never mind. I don't want to be an umpire. That's sad, bro. That's sad. You're like a stand-up comic, but without the laughter. You have to drive everywhere and make no money and get yelled at constantly. That's so sad. Managers like Wally Backman have become famous for tirades like this, oh, where he no. followed the umpire around the field, covered home plate in dirt, not in dirt, a dozen bats and a bucket of balls. Don't cover home plate. Big That's big his home. You piece of sh
The craziest part about this is that the league didn't even suspend or fine him and instead <laughs> scolded the umpire for acting unprofessionally. Backman was suspended, however, for cursing out the opposing team's Man. radio announcer and general manager for their comments about his ejection. But hands down, that's the so pound many for bats, pound dude. King of disrespecting umpires is a manager named Joe Mikulik. Joe Mikulik has built up a resume with several Woo! of the best ejections of all time. While arguing with the Good call, slide. He took oh, he's safe. His shoes and threw one <laughs> he of declared himself the safe. Dugout. On another occasion, he took his shoes and shirt off uh -huh. and left them at home plate. His signature move is to demonstrate to the umpires how they got the call wrong by sliding into a base himself. <laughs> He also loves taking the bases out from the ground and throwing them. I love this guy, them, dude. Or giving them to a fan. But his best ejection occurred in 2006. I love this guy. He screamed at an umpire's face, dove into second base, stole the bag, threw it into right field, threw the rosin bag into right field, kicked dirt on the umpire, then covered the plate in dirt, went to the Holy dugout, threw shit. four bats onto the field, went back onto the field, covered the plate in water, slammed his water bottle, screamed in the umpire's face again, and left the game. As of now no other minor league manager can live up to the legend of Joe Micklick. Wait, he's minor league? He's not he's not major league, just to be clear. I didn't catch that part. Wait, he's not even like the Yankees. What the fuck? If I'm the umpire, I'm finding his hotel. <laughs> Yeah, I don't I, I don't know. If I'm the umpire, somebody has to swing on this dude. I would start an umpire union. But many seem You would have to, to do something. Gary Get a team of umpires, an umpire, a gang. Home plate, then stole first base, autographed it, and gave it to a kid in the stands. Butch That's Hobson, sweet. once he got ejected, then pretended to hit a home run, ran around the bases, <laughs> then celebrated with his team. Player Brian Metzger once got ejected and proceeded to get a garbage can from the dugout and placed it behind home plate. Pat I Kelly thought he was going to dump it. That would have been way better. Umpires took his jersey off, used the rosin bag as a stick of deodorant, and spiked it into the ground. And Cash Bocamp took off one of his shoes, stuck it in an umpire's face, <laughs> made him smell his armpit, spiked his other shoe, then went to the Holy dugout, shit, got two dude. batting weights, and used them as binoculars. How mad have you been in your life? Can you think about the maddest you've ever been? I feel like the maddest I've ever been, the moment that I expressed it, I immediately was like, this is too much. And then I stopped. You know what I mean? Like, I had a, I have a pretty short fuse sometimes, but the moment that I express it, I'm like, who gives a shit? Nobody cares how I feel. This is dedication, dude. This is righteous indignation to feel this mad for this long. Just like you players, have to believe that you're in the, the right lowest level of the minors the umpires with the best evaluations will move up to the next level However, until they get to triple-a if an umpire goes three seasons without being promoted They are required to go all the way back to <gasps> umpire school and start the process over again No Regularly host over a hundred umpires every single year on average, only one of them will ever call a major league game. According Damn. to Baseball America, about 17% of players drafted in MLB will play a major league game, while only 3% of minor league umpires will ever call a major league game. Wow. Well, that makes sense. Elite, it typically takes him 10 to 15 years to ever get a chance at the major league level. Holy shit, dude. That makes sense because how many umpires are there in a game? Is it is it just the one? Or is there also umpires at, at first base? There are five, four, five. Okay. Because I was going to say, baseball teams, there's what, like 20 people on the field? But no, and, and plus you could be an umpire forever. Like when you're a player, you have to retire at a certain age. Your body breaks down. Umpires, you just need to look. As long as your eyes work. There's 10. No, 10 per team, right? 10 per team. Right? So 20 total. Am I wrong? There's 25 people on a baseball team. Yeah, see? What? I know baseball. I was a shortstop and a pitcher once. If you account for all the hours I know of travel Come and on. preparation, minor league umpires get paid under minimum peace, wage, John so their motivation to move up is extremely high and is constantly being reviewed. And only no, I play the guys. Don't do that. Don't do that. Shortstop is a very venerable, honorable position. Don't don't disrespect me with this. 
Don't do this to me. It's an important position to play. The ones with the best evaluations will ever come close to the major it's league important. level. But MLB umpires still have a reputation of being <laughs> the worst stuff. officials in sports. And a study done in 2018 makes it seem that this could be true. But baseball fans have been saying this for years because of calls like this. Jim Joyce calls the runner safe, but he is clearly out. Jim Joyce was I'll be the, the judge best umpire in the Let league by it. players in 2012 and even saved a woman's life with CPR before a game. What? But what he is most known for is making this call, which is one of the worst in history and prevented the final out in oh. what should have been the 18th perfect game of all time. Or this call where the <laughs> Oh, I can't believe they got this in real time. In what should have been the 18th perfect game. <laughs> yeah! Or yeah, what? This call. Oh, dude, he's so sad. This poor guy. Where the runner is called out. A but perfect Helton game. Is two feet off the bag. And strikes like these, where the ball is clearly right down the middle, called a ball, or way out of the zone, and called a strike. Fans can easily tell when an umpire blows a call due to the animated strike zone on TV Oh, broadcast. that's fucked up. But you shouldn't don't have that. have this luxury, and it shows. Boston University analyzed over 4 million pitches over These 11 poor umpires, bro. And claim I stand with umps. Balls and strikes, These poor guys. Make the wrong call over 12% of the time, and average 14 missed calls know, a dude. game. They rank the umpire based on performance, and although MLB says umpires are assigned postseason games based on how good they are, they found some of the worst performing umpires <laughs> often called the biggest games, which historically has Man. been a problem and produced some of the worst calls in history. In a one-game playoff to go to the NLDS, Matt Holliday went home on a sacrifice fly. When he got there, he never touched the plate, but he was called safe, well... scoring the game-winning run and eliminating the Padres. This was called a double- Wait, are you allowed to do that? Eliminating the Bro, I didn't know you could block the plate like that. Damn, he stepped on his foot. Ouch! Those are cleats. Motherfucker, that hurts. Bro, he touched it. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, bro. That looks like it touched to me, right? He kissed home plate. Mwah! <laughs> oh, God. You know what? If I'm an umpire, that's safe. Any of the Padres. This was called safe. a double play in the LCS, even though Chuck Knobloch missed the tag by at least a foot. Mike Napoli got Jorge Posada and Robinson Cano in a pickle. Clearly tagged both of them while they were off the bag, <laughs> but both were called safe. Even Bro, Cano what? thought he was out, so he left the bag again. Napoli tagged him again, but he was still called safe. In 1985, <laughs> the Cardinals were three outs away from winning the World Series until the leadoff hitter was called safe on this play where he was clearly out. Later that inning, he and another runner would go on to score oh, to win no. the game, forcing a game seven where the Cardinals lost, meaning that there is a pretty good chance that this bad call cost the Cardinals the World Series. And in the 1997 NLCS, in what could have been the worst umpire performance of all time, no. Eric Gregg, for some reason, decided to call every single outside pitch to <laughs> a strike, even if they were a foot out of the zone. Levon Hernandez pitched nine innings and that dude was paid the fuck off. Listen, it's kind of fucked up to have technology <laughs> shit on umpires, but what the fuck? Bro, he's not even in front of him. The catcher isn't even in front of the umpire here. Oh my god. He's leaned over. They were a foot out of the zone. Levon Hernandez Dude, pitched nine innings. I would and be a corrupt umpire with 15 strikeouts, despite averaging less than seven. I'd strikeouts be corrupt as shit that season. Boston Pay University out. Dumped. Out of the seven umpires who who's going to stop World me? Series, none of them were in the top ten best performing umpires, and the man who was selected as crew chief was actually one of the ten worst performing umpires. Umpires are watched by evaluators on every single pitch. They are not only judged by their decisions, but also how they dress, how they conduct themselves, and even how they stand between innings umpires get a report wow. after every single game telling them what they did right what they did wrong and how they can improve from That's 2008 to 2018 up. umpires improved
improved as a whole every single year. Major League umpires are more accurate and consistent than ever before Good. thanks to the feedback they get on these reports. These reports also show which umpires are performing worse than the others. For a full-time umpire to be fired, evaluators have to notice a drop in performance. Ooh. This does occur, but to my knowledge, them being fired for it has either never happened or is extremely rare. When umpires are fired, it's usually because of some controversial off-the-field issue. Dave Pallone was forced to resign after the New York Post reported he was involved in an illegal sex ring. He was later cleared of that A charge what? and says okay. MLB got rid of We're him good. solely for the fact they found out he was gay. Al Clark was fired for oh, shit. his first class flights paid by MLB and keeping the money. An umpire was recently <laughs> fired for failing multiple drug tests. It is way more likely for an umpire to be suspended, which actually happens quite frequently. Bro, if I'm an umpire, I'm calling everything a strike. Get me out of this game faster. Work smarter, not harder. Everything's a strike. Fuck it. I don't care. I Let this game end. I'm not wasting anybody's time. Strike, 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 strike. It's all strikes. Bruce Fremming received a 10-day suspension for using an anti-Semitic slur about an umpire administrator. Like William... Bro, I definitely would forget the count. I would definitely forget the count. I would definitely be like, strike two is out. I would, I would just fuck up constantly. I would have to look at the screen all the time. This was suspended after he caused Milton Bradley to tear his ACL. According to MLB, Milton Bradley? Bradley, causing him to get mad, run That's out of the dugout, the game. and hurt his knee. The umpire was suspended for the they rest make monopoly. Of the season, and another umpire was suspended for making threats to Rob Manfred. So when umpires are punished, it seems like it's always for reasons other than making bad calls, which may explain Angel Hernandez and Joe West, who are currently the two most hated umpires in Major League <laughs> Baseball. And if you look at their histories, it's pretty obvious. Tell me why. Angel Hernandez Tell me why. Is from Cuba and once filed a racial discrimination lawsuit against. MLB after not being selected to umpire in the World Series. The public would have had more sympathy for him if it wasn't for him being wildly criticized for making calls like this, where the ball clearly goes over the fence, uh -huh. hits a rail, and comes back onto play. Angel looked at this on replay and still called it a double. And it is, is that a home run? If it does that, that's a home run, right? If it hits back in... Okay. Angel looked at this on I thought if it got knocked back in it's fair game. I don't know. Maybe the rules have changed. Replay and over the yellow is a home run. run. Gotcha. In a okay. Playoff game. He once had four gotcha, plays gotcha, gotcha. reviewed in the first four innings. A lot of baseball Three fans of in the reversed. chat, bro. He stared down and ejected former NFL player Steve McMichael when he said this after singing "Take Me Out to the Ball Game" at a Cubs game. Mongo? I'll have some speak with that home plate umpire after the game. CC Sabathia said he doesn't understand That's Big Mongo McMichael? Games. Pedro Martinez says he was horrible and MLB Send for the man. something about him. Chipper Jones promised he would never watch a game umpired by him ever again. And after Ian Kinsler was ejected by Angel, he told the media he was surprised how bad he was at his job. Which prompted <laughs> Angel and other umpires to wear white wristbands to protest umpire abuse. So it is no surprise that when the court found no discrimination between MLB... This motherfucker looks like a cyborg. How much armor do they wear? What the fuck? He looks like RoboCop. Why he look like that? There's an entire foam board? Like, it, I can't tell where the armor ends. Like, there's clearly something here. What's going on here? It's like sideways. He got covered in dirt one too many times. <laughs> it's time to make take justice into my own hands. Test umpire <laughs> abuse. So it is no surprise I'll never that be the abused court found again. No discrimination between MLB and Angel These guys have a history of being shot. I did forget about that. Good point. That's a very good point. They have been shot before. Perhaps they they deserve it. And as many fans were ecstatic. However, Angel Hernandez <laughs> I played kid pitch up until my dad hit me three times in the head in a row. I think your dad hated baseball. I think your dad just really didn't like baseball and he wanted you to try lacrosse or soccer. Your dad's just like, don't kick you on the head. Your dad's a gamer. <laughs> I'm sick. I'm sick of playing baseball, bro. 
Let's go play Super Mario World. Dunk, dunk, dunk. <laughs> That's very funny. That's extremely funny. Mentioning lacrosse is the most Maryland shit ever. Dude, it's because my dad loved lacrosse. My dad wanted me to play lac lacrosse so bad, and I was a baseball player. I was very good at baseball, but I, I hated lacrosse, but my dad loved lacrosse. Probably isn't as bad of an umpire as people think. Although he is probably below average, according to Boston University, he did not make the top 10 worst umpire list. In 2018, Joe West was on that list. He's been an umpire for- Prove you were good? Years. Where are the videos? What do you mean? <laughs> They're on VHS. ...has released two country albums. <laughs> was in the movie Naked Gun you can't throw an out of the game. Yeah. and plays golf on the Celebrity Players Tour. He was once suspended for oh. grabbing manager Joe Torre after a game. He was suspended for grabbing Jonathan Papelbon after ejecting him, was suspended for saying Adrian Beltran was the biggest complainer in baseball, and Andre Dawson once threw 14 bats on the field That's too because many he bats. was mad at Joe West. Joe West was once so annoyed with Raul Mondesi for taking so long to get in the box, he called a strike before he was even in the box. <laughs> 2010, I love that you could do that. I love that. Umpire in baseball. In 2011, 41% of players called him the worst umpire in baseball. 41%. He ranked second least accurate umpire according to Boston University. Damn. Andy 67? Bro, if you are the most hated umpire, the second least accurate and 67, what's going on? Joe West umpired his How do you last keep game your job? in 2021, shortly after breaking the record for most games umpired in Major League Okay, history. he retired. He is 68 years old, and to be fair to him, his okay. stats of being one of the worst umpires is probably not accurate throughout go, his Joe. entire career. Okay, he's if gone. He evaluated his calls in his prime, he was probably an above average umpire. This Boston dude University stays getting hit. Umpires seem to perform worse as they get older. Unfortunately, MLB seems to value experience, which usually leaves out any umpire on the top 10 list because they are all under the age of 40. Bro, I'm Replacing so sick older of old people. With younger minor league umpires would probably... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> However, MLB seems to be going in a different direction. For several years, they have experimented with a robot ump in the Arizona Fall League <laughs> and the Atlantic League. Man Track Frank man. Viola has already been ejected at least two times for arguing with the robot. This pitch was seen at a player's neck and called a strike, and there have been many you more... You can argue calls. with the robot and get in trouble? The ...into the minor league level in 2021, and seems like it wants to take it to the major league level oh, sooner shit. rather than later. Just like instant replay, people literally will complain, 1984. But also, just like instant replay, it will be in major league baseball, and by the time it is, it will almost be, without a doubt, more accurate than major league umpires, Dude, who are better now umpires. than they've ever been. However, their job is extremely difficult. They'll never be perfect, and it's hard to compete with a robot. Human umpires will still be needed to listen to the call in their ear set and make the strike or ball That's signal tough, and make calls bro. on the basis. There will still be umpires, just less arguments, less bats thrown Wait. on the field, and less ejections, which to me is unfortunate. But there will also be more correct Damn. calls, which in reality he is the his whole point of having an umpire in the first place. Wait, so the robot makes the call, but the umpire still has to do it? So if you yell at the umpire, you're actually yelling at the robot. You're just yelling at the at the at the man who represents the robot. Damn, that's sad. You get all of the abuse but none of the love. That's so sad. All right, we're going to find out why the mascot got kicked out. I'm so curious on this. But first I'm going to go to the bathroom. Give me one sec. One sec. One sec. One sec.
Why was he here? What is he doing? Banjo. Why was he here? I don't know what he... Uh, he never shows up. That's so weird. Sorry it took me so long. I, uh... Banjo! Sorry it took so long. I blew my nose. What? Why are you staring at me? What? What? You heard me ta say that? From over there? No, you didn't. What did I say? Oh, okay. She didn't hear what I said. Okay. <laughs> okay. I love you. Okay, she did hear what I say. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> I love you. No. No, chat always says I don't wash my hands, but I do. Yes, I do. Go away. Yes, I do. How would you even know? Take your glue gun. Get the hell out of here. Yes, I fucking did. Do you know? It's not your birthday anymore. Your birth week? Your birthday is the day after Jesus. He takes precedence. Get out of here. Get out of here. Jesus Christ. Okay. So I, uh, sorry it took so long. I, don't, happy birthday, Mal. It was on the 26th. Her birthday is on Boxing Day. You know that, right? Sorry it took so long. I blew my nose when I was in the bathroom because I'm sick. And it started bleeding bad. <laughs> So I'm trying not to. Hold on. Oh, <clears throat> yeah. I just don't want to. I'm not trying to put you guys up to it. You know, lay off the nose candy. I'm trying. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, I blew my nose and my my nose started bleeding. So. And then I wash my hands. It's not... Shut up, chat. That's not even what happens in COVID. You don't get nosebleeds, do you? You need to stop using your psychic powers. I've tried. It's he so fun. He managed the Dodgers for a very long time. He kind of looks like Rodney Dangerfield. And he once got a mascot ejected from a baseball game. Which mascot? Yeah, which, which mascot? Uh, Yuppie. No. Who, who the hell is Who's Yuppie? Yuppie. Yuppie. Yuppie is great. He's uh, essentially a Quebecois Philly fanatic. <laughs> Feels like a dangerous Not thing to too say. edgy. <laughs> okay. People stunts. He replaced a very creepy mascot. Suki. That oh, God. That was there for like a season. Is he like a gumball man? Named Suki, who was like if Mr. Met went to space. And his name was Suki? Yeah, I think I'm getting that right. He also, the other okay. <laughs> the other really good thing is, for whatever reason, the minor league teams affiliated with the Expos couldn't also have a Yuppie, so they had a Yuppie, which really looks like if Yuppie stayed in like his creation vat a little too long. Why can't I see it? I no, just want to see the yeah. picture. <laughs> uh, what does Yuppie mean? I want to see oh, Yuppie. it's just French for Yippie. Yippie! Yuppie! Yuppie! Yeah. Yuppie! But he's basically a walking celebration. Gotcha, gotcha. Which, complete opposite from Tommy Lasorda. The Dodgers were in Montreal in August of 1989. There also was just like some bad calls, which is important because it allows the crotchety Lasorda to become an even crotchetier Lasorda. Uh -huh. A lot of people know this as the Eddie Murray game, player on the Dodgers who just kept getting screwed over by the umps. So just 
bad vibes all around. Bad vibes across the board. But Yuppie's there. But Yuppie's there. And Tommy Lasorda's there. And Tommy Lasorda feeds off of bad vibes. Each time Lasorda would go out to argue a call, he would return to the dugout and be greeted by <laughs> Like, who? in the dugout? <laughs> On top of the dugout. The human so, exclamation okay. point himself. <laughs> when did he go to sleep? He's not human. Yeah, he's not, yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. You're right, you're right, you're right. He would stand on the opposing team's dugout and stomp around, <laughs> and the roof just happened to be made out of aluminum. No way, so he's stomping. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> why not make it out of the loudest material right. possible? <laughs> so you... Bro. It's just like dimensions. It's the same guy. You basically have a team Holy in a, shit. a loud metal cage. Goosh, goosh, so goosh. Up on the dugout. No, I'd be annoyed at you, B2. I'd be mad the as hell. Inside the dugout, he pops out to just shut the fuck up, Yuppie! And everyone loves it. Yuppie recognizes that, like, oh, cool, this is working. People are laughing. This guy's getting upset. So I'll <laughs> stomp exactly over where he is in the dugout. That's always <laughs> such an asshole thing to do. It's, it's <laughs> kind of, yeah, but like, that's the job of the mascot, right? I don't know a lot about Tommy Lasorda. Like, I don't really remember him. But are mascots supposed like to piss you off? To say he was like kind of an asshole, like kind of a famously <laughs> irascible person. Right, right. He definitely was towards dream job. Mascots. There are exactly three mascots that have displays in the Baseball Hall of Fame. It's Yuppie, the Philly fanatic and the famous chicken from San Diego. The okay. what? Tom Lasorda has gotten in fights with all of them. <laughs> not joking. Against the Fanatic, he like stole the ATV that the Fanatic was riding around. It was really great actually, the Fanatic had Dude's like, doing a, a boss rush. version of Tommy Lasorda making fun of Lasorda's gut. A baseball comes flying out from off screen to hit the Fanatic as he's driving off on his ATV, which I assume Lasorda, the former pitcher. Dude, I would thrown. kill to be a mascot. <laughs> he that rules. cornered the famous chicken. The San Diego chicken. The San Diego chicken. And strangled him and told him if he stomped on any Dodgers hats that night, he would put his hand around his throat and squeeze until his eyes popped so, out. Oh my God. Some hats that <laughs> night. <laughs> so he was just really sensitive. What's wrong with Tommy, More bro? Confused by mascots <laughs> and puppetry. It kind of feels like he's like that. The furry chicken alien hurt my feelings. Right, right. This dude and hates so the Muppets. Yuppie manages to get 20,000 fans to, like, laugh at you. <laughs> oh, he took that shit personal. Yeah. yeah. I guess the that's true. I didn't consider the fan element. In, like, the 10th inning. Still scoreless. After Lasorda had already gotten Yuppie to leave the top of the dugout a couple times, and he just like plopped down in the front row. Yuppie had a little wardrobe, <laughs> and he put on an oversized nightshirt and one of those just like droopy nightcaps. I love this dude. Brought a pillow out <laughs> and went to sleep on top of the. Well, he's not smashing dugout. anymore. Tenth inning, scoreless, perfect goof. Bro, it's a boring ass game. Nobody scored in 10 innings. I would sleep too. Lasorda, though. What the fuck? Steps out, asks the ump to throw him out of the game. And the ump just like blows a bubble and then tosses Yuppie. They threw Yuppie out of the they game? They threw Yuppie <laughs> out of the game and then get the saddest walk of a dejected. Poor Yuppie, bro. <laughs> okay, so that's a gif I've seen of the ump. Right. Tossing him, and then he kind of like slides off of the dugout. It's, How fed up do you have to be, though, to toss a f mascot? Well, at that point, the ump has to be just fed up with Tommy Lasorda. Right. And he's like, true, I am true. so, yeah. I'm already dealing with the shit on the field. Do not further provoke this person <laughs> who is making my night of work. Right. Poor Yuppie, bro. So Yuppie left. And then they played another like 12 innings. This what? Game went 22 innings. 22, it went 22 innings. 22 innings. Dodgers won one nothing. So Yuppie was absent for most of the game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine Yuppie? They should have kept Yuppie game. around. Now I feel like if a game goes past like 15 innings, the mascots should be players. Like you should go into sudden death, and you should introduce more players onto the team over and over until something happens. Somebody wins. You know, the bases are just always loaded. Next base hit wins. Just you have to be able to do something. <laughs> the, the funny thing about the Lasorda getting mad when he was sleeping on top of the dugout. Call in allies from other teams. Presumably Yuppie wasn't making any noise by doing that because he was just, you know, sort of static. Right. Mm -hmm. And still. And so, based on my knowledge of the topography of these things, 
Well, Sorter would have to poke his head out and be like, is he still, oh, this motherfucker is still, like, he's in a nightgown it's now. Not like, it's not like you heard him stomping around. It's like, I just have a feeling. I forget that we actually worked with someone who used to be a mascot. Wait, actually? Yeah. John? How hard is it to become a mascot? mascot? I could actually see that too. I could not. It Who's can't that? be that hard, Kobe. right? Kobe. For what? I don't know. He tells is me Kobe here? Hang on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kobe! There he goes. Wait, get, come get on the couch. Come, come sit, sit, man. Mascot Yo, we, in a day. We just day. learned something Easy. about you. A day? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hold this I up. feel like you gotta go to some kind of like here. clown college, Can you right? A mascot? It was one time. Tw actually, I've been a mascot. In college? Twice. Wait, no. okay. Wait, you on. said twice? Wait. I have, I have so many questions from those like <laughs> five words you just said. So once uh, we stole a high school mascot, we just like. Oh, so you're the right. The cost Please. is selling your no. dignity. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody knows it's me. I could no, just lie. The mascot, current mascot was like, I don't want to do this. Okay. And he put it down and okay. he picked it up and put the, put the eagle head on. Okay, and you Raven. performed as such. Man, that is <laughs> multiple betrayals. <laughs> Second time, I was an intern for a... Okay, the rest of this story is, is not, uh, not about the thing. Damn, dude. I want to be a mascot. Pretty good story. This is a pretty good channel. Pete Rose. What else do they have? Weirdest player in baseball. The biggest little league cheating scandal. The weirdest play. Damn, they got two video. Huh? Is that the same video? Oh, this one's six minutes. This one's twelve. Okay, this is an update. Got it. Okay. Not bad. Little, little League cheating does sound funny. I don't know how they got a picture with Obama. <laughs> what happened there? The biggest psychopath in baseball. Max Scherzer, the biggest psycho in baseball. Bro, they're just updating all their old shit. That's crazy. That's amazing. Good for them. The most unbelievable story in sports. Whenever I see a title like that, I'm like, dude, you're... Come on, ever? The biggest bully victim in sports. Oh, man. Wait, people hate Manny Machado? Bro, I'm from Maryland. People in my area love Manny Machado. People love this fucking guy. Not Machado. Machado's kind of a bitch. Okay, <laughs> I had no idea. Is softball harder than baseball? No. The ball's bigger. It's easier to hit. Okay. This next one is something I've had on my docket for a long-ass time. And I've never actually seen this channel, I don't think, unless I'm missing a time. But I have to see this. There's a speedrun channel called... Carl Yopst? Jobst? Yopst? Is that it? Carl. It's Carl! <laughs> Might have got Rona, GG Kings. Yeah, dude, I'm sick as hell. I don't think I'm Rona, but who knows? I couldn't say. Carl Yopes? Yeah, I don't know how to say that. Hopefully he'll tell us. The worst fake speed run on YouTube. <laughs> I'll be the judge of that. Hello, you absolute legends. As I've said before, cheating exists in is he every Swedish? single competition, and speedrunning is no exception. He's Swedish. We've even covered some examples of speedrunners doctoring videos and demos. Oh yeah, also, you can't get mad at me for watching this. This has almost 15 million views. I'm allowed to watch this. <laughs> I get my turn. In order to try and fool Australian? people into believing Wait, really? their claims of impressive feats. It may seem counterintuitive, but you'd be surprised at how often it's some I of can the kind best of hear players it that inevitably bit. try to fake runs. You might think that having the talent to achieve a, a little record would make someone less susceptible Damn, to cheating. Damn, that's a weird but it often part works of Australia. Them. Having talent, he must be from the middle. People feel entitled. They feel like they deserve the world record, and when the game they play doesn't give them the luck they need, they become increasingly frustrated. On top of this, Run is having fake talent is this and deep knowledge of a game makes you a better cheater. <laughs> You know what tools to use and how to hide your edits. You understand what does or doesn't make sense, what is or isn't possible, and uh -huh. what's believable. 
When top players cheat, it's almost always detected by other top players looking much deeper than a normal spectator might. In Super Mario 64, multiple world record holders have been caught splicing runs Ooh. by using audio analysis combined with a healthy knowledge of what the Nintendo 64 can and can't output. But these runs went under How the radar can you tell? for years because the discrepancy is so slight that to any normal viewer, it looks exactly the same as any other run. The fact that better players ah, I can better tell. cheaters that jump was means different. that arguments that jump was weird. he's such I a good tell. player, he has no reason to cheat, are fundamentally flawed. I could tell. When Billy Mitchell and Todd Rogers were exposed as frauds, this was one of the game. most common arguments their defenders tried to make. If anything, having a better understanding of a game makes you even more likely to cheat. Bro, did Billy Mitchell cheat or not? I watched that movie, King of Kong, like 15 years ago. And I remember that movie being like, this guy's an asshole, but I don't remember any specific conclusions. I thought it was just like, yeah, this guy's a prick. He did cheat? Are you sure? Guys, this could be libel or slander or whatever the fuck, <laughs> whichever one it is. It was after that. Yeah, I, I know that there have been more developments. I need to catch up on this guy. I was always like, I, I, I believe he cheated, but I think it's the hair. If I see somebody with this Alan Rickman, Professor Snape haircut, I don't trust anything they say. Which is why at the top level, proof standards are so Which important. Which is pretty unfair I myself, you know? craft a fake speed run that I'm sure 99.9% of you yeah. would completely miss. Because I know enough about the games I play to make it believable. Billy is suing Carl? No. That's a joke, right? Billy suing this guy? He sues everyone. Oh shit, I get But what would happen if I tried to kill this VOD? What the fuck? I didn't play. This would make it much, this is much not going harder on YouTube. to do. It would perhaps make it impossible. If you don't play the game, you're probably going to have to steal the footage from other players. Once you've done that, you'll have to combine them in Remember a way that Remember when EE did that with unique. Cuphead? But then you're leaving yourself open to continuity errors. As a speedrunner, I know generally how splices should or shouldn't be done. I've wanted so to play Cuphead again fantastic recently, edits, by the way. But I would have no idea if what I'm stringing together makes any sense. I love that What game. about if you weren't a speedrunner at all, but were still hell-bent on trying to fake a speedrun? Well, it just so happens we have an example of this very thing, and it's one of the worst abominations of a faked speedrun I've ever seen. Mm. Now, generally, some random noob trying to look cool by editing together a fake speedrun isn't that interesting. Uh -huh. But the monstrosity we will examine today was crafted by a YouTube channel with over 40 million subscribers. Damn! And the video in question has millions of views. The video contains as many every as this sin one. under the sun. Stolen speedruns, impossible gameplay, terrible, baffling editing. It's truly a work of art, and today, we will break it apart. I want to see it. Let me see it. I want to see it. The video in question comes from the Mexican channel, Barabun. It is one of the largest channels on YouTube with over 42 million subscribers. Okay. According to their Wikipedia page, they specialize in the creation of original and viral content. Okay. Keep the word original in mind throughout this video. Sure. On the 17th of December, 2017, they uploaded a video titled Pasando Bro, Super the heart Mario rate's killing me. Minutos, which translates to passing Super Mario in five minutes. The heart the rate's going to be so states, good. Join us to see how our friend, Tavo Betancourt, in a relaxed and fun way, plays this legendary 80s Super Mario video All game. Alright! Let's see how he does! Five minutes. He has a pretty nice layout, containing the essentials like a timer and heart rate monitor. Mm -hmm. I wonder where he got the inspiration to include those. The premise is simple. Tavo is going to finish Super Mario Brothers in five minutes, which honestly isn't that crazy of an accomplishment. Over 100 speedrunners have already done it, so it's really nothing too that amazing. That seems kind of crazy. But the problem is that Tavo isn't a speedrunner, and despite not being incredibly difficult, beating Super Mario Brothers in five minutes does take some time to learn how to do. Sure. Tavo has his own YouTube career to worry about, with his personal <laughs> channel having almost five million subscribers. Okay, if I heard about a five million sub influencer beating Mario, in five, what the? How would anybody believe this? What the fuck? What is his content? Is that a dog thing? Like to catch dogs? You know, that's like one of the hooks that you get a dog. Like if you work at the pound in cartoons, right? What is that? This dude just makes skits. So I assume he is pretty busy. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, if you are not a speedrunner and you want to try and fake a speedrun, you're a in the- A rabies pole? Is that what it's called? <gasps> oh my god! 
God, you're right. Well, no, you're wrong. It's literally not called that anywhere here. But it's called a catch poll, and when I searched rabies poll, it came up. I never knew what it was called. Good to know. Option is to steal footage from somewhere else, which is exactly what Tavo does. No, the choice of Tavo. footage doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense, though. And this might be because he has no clue about Super Mario speedrunning, but he chooses a tool-assisted speedrun. The task <laughs> was made by KLMZ in 2008, and from the first moment of the speedrun, we find out why it was a bad choice. The task uses a technique known as fast acceleration, oh, which is dude. performed whenever Mario starts from a standstill in order to get to max speed in the quickest manner. Tavo. The problem with this technique, though, is that the inputs require you to press left and right on the same frame. While the software does technically allow these inputs to happen, they aren't possible to do on a regular Nintendo controller because of the way the D-pad functions. Maybe not for you. for this reason that the technique is banned from using... <laughs> Bro, he doesn't even do anything with his fingers. Like, you would have to, to do this, you would have to, like, boom, boom, right? You have to seriously hit the button, but he's just, like, because of the very the casual. Functions. It is for this Man's got the Coke the Zero on deck with the pizza run. and the lava lamp. So aside from the fact that fast acceleration is too difficult to pull off, even if it were possible, Tavo is using a regular controller and wouldn't <laughs> be able to do it, even if he had the talent. This task only fast acceleration isn't to be confused with the difficult maneuvers speedrunners do actually use in runs, which is also called fast acceleration. This is a much easier, albeit still difficult set of inputs that are at least possible to execute. One really bizarre if thing about the this video thing, is the sound is and confused. music. It has been pitched weirdly so it doesn't sound anything like it should. Okay. Oh, God. Is that to avoid copyright ID? There might be a couple of reasons this was done. The first being the fear of the music. Ah, yeah, take a sip. Take a sip. The Delicious. other might be a way to make it seem this different is a from the footage moment. that was being stolen. Either way, it just sounds strange. When Tavo takes the shortcut in the first level, it seems normal at first glance. Uh -huh. But there is something that is not quite right. I'm going to play the shortcut and then pause it for a few seconds. See if you can identify what's wrong with the run. Okay. If you want to try and work it out, you'll probably need to watch it a few times. Okay. Goes in the shortcut. Time is 384. Mario is 400 points. Alright, I'll move cam. I'll move cam. Alright, here we go. Here we go. We're gonna go over here. Okay? Analyze. Here we go. Okay. One coin, 400 points. Is it time? No, time is fine. He got 2,400 points. Should a few times. For 12 coins, which makes sense. 200 per coin, right? Yeah. Wait. Wait. Aha. 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 I found it. He didn't get this fucking coin. Look at that. What does that have to do with splicing, though? No, look, he did. Oh, it does get the coin. <laughs> okay, I thought it would update. Okay, shut up. Hold on. Okay, it updated. Okay, wait. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Wait. Okay. It says one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's the coin, right? We need to watch it a few look at the timer times 
All right, 385. There's nothing wrong with the timer. What do you mean? The timer's fine. It's moving too fast. No, it's fucking not. Guys. Oh, my God. Chat is Zoomer. Chat is Zoomer. Chat is so fucking stupid. You guys are so fucking dumb. Chat doesn't know that Mario timer goes fast. Oh, my God. That is so embarrassing for you that I have an audience of Zoomers. It's the coin. Watch. Watch this. It's the coin, because he picked up 11. Congratulations to those who managed to figure it out. The problem here is that Tavo collects 11 coins in the room, ah! but the coin counter goes up by 12. Dumb shit! For some reason, he decided Get to the use fuck out of my stream! But don't, please shortcut. don't leave. My only guess is that please he wanted leave. to make it less obvious that the run was stolen. So he figured if he spliced different runs together, it would be less traceable. The problem with splicing different runs he... together is that the points and coins won't match up between levels. Okay. Tavo was keenly aware of this, so his solution was to crop the top display from the original TAS speedrun. Ah. Throughout the entire run, the display will be from that same TAS. The crop was really poorly done, though, and this brings some pretty funny consequences, as we'll see later. Well, that one's really kind of minor. You would also have noticed that the cropped display includes some of the texture underneath causing the top of the graphics to appear distorted sure. as they aren't properly aligned. If you were really, really I astute, it was just the you would have picked up on the fact that the display appeared a couple of frames later than it should have. The display should appear on the same frame as the level textures, but in the video, it lags behind. Ah. If you were really, really, really astute, you would also have noticed that the flashing of the coin in the display does not align with the coins in the level. I did notice that! Wait. These are always on the same cycle. Never mind, I lied. I didn't notice that. The display does not align with the coins in the level. These are always on the same cycle, so there should be no difference in I thought he meant like when you pick up the coin, it doesn't it it's supposed to go up right away. Okay. Between the My two bad. at any point. I have an inkling about where this footage might be from, but we'll come back to this a bit later. Okay. At the end of the level, the task performs the flagpole glitch, which skips the lowering of the flag. This trick is definitely doable by a human, and is even performed in the world record runs. The difference, though, is that there is a specific setup that a human must use if they want to get this trick consistently. The TAS essentially YOLOs it without any setup at all, which is not feasible in any way by someone actually playing the game. Okay. In Unless you're this two, guy. different footage is again stolen, and this time there are some pretty clear artifacts that help us identify exactly where it is from. Where? At a couple of moments, you can see a line appear through the graphics. <laughs> also, throughout the level, you can actually hear clicks from a controller indicating that the footage has been extracted from a live video. Huh? The run was stolen from the world record holder at the time known as Darbian. Wait, one of what? The time great Super Mario players. Just lights show up? It's run what? of 4 minutes, 56 seconds, and 878 milliseconds, set on the 5th of September 2016. Okay. The same lines can be seen in his live footage, and the audio clicks are exactly the same. I'm guessing it was this video that gave Battleborn the inspiration to make their video. Given that Darby so and has just millions of the views, same thing. they likely saw the inspiration to make their video. Given that Darby's run has millions. Of Bro, what? If you're gonna steal a run, why would you steal one? The view with 10 million views. What the fuck? How many people have done this to like 10,000 people? You could just steal one of those. That's what I would do. If you ever see me beat Mario 1 in 5 minutes, I definitely stole it from a YouTuber who has like 20 subs. They likely saw the opportunity they will never to find recreate out. it and try to make another viral video from it. This is probably why they included a heart rate monitor as well. Speaking of which, is completely Bro, he's pointless. ice cold. He's it ice just cold. It switches between 85 and 89 for the entire run. <laughs> I mean, it's obviously fake, but they could have at least tried to make it seem realistic. <laughs> at the end of 1-2 is where one of the more egregious errors this dude's caused mad by the terribly consistent. cropped display happens. When running on the top of the stage to get to the warp pipes, Mario is completely Bro, obscured. where's Mario? This is definitely not what is supposed to happen. Where did Mario when go? When the warp pipe, the display at the top disappears before the graphics do, which again is not normal. 
The display Tavo. should disappear on the exact same frame as the rest of the level graphics. Tavo. The reason they fade early is because the display is still going by the timing of the TAS, which does a much faster strategy for 1-2. Therefore, it finishes the level early, causing the display to vanish. This ends up making the loading times between levels much faster than they otherwise should be, uh -huh. as that lost time has to be made up to catch up with the TAS. Going back to the shortcut in 1-1, I said I had an inkling a few of the footage belonged to, uh -huh. and it's probably Darbian's as well. The video in the shortcut matches up with the same run that was used for 1-2, mm. but the sound of the controller clicks are pretty bad in Darbian's run during this shortcut, and I think Badabun thought it was a bit too much, so they tried to fix it by keeping the audio from the TAS run. Bro, look at the coin. Oh. Wait, why does it... Huh? What? How did this... Huh? How did they... This bar is from the task, not the video. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, if they have one coin and two coins, but they have the same score, how do they have different scores at the end? Much. So they tried okay, to fix okay, it by okay. keeping I've the audio got from it. the I've task got run got during I've that got section. It. I've got it. The audio I've got from it. the coins that are collected in the room I've got it. I'm do dialed not match in. up I'm with dialed what is happening on screen. I'm and dialed the audio in. matches red coins and blue coins. That's what it was. Thank you. Perfectly with the task. Honestly, the shortcut in the task doesn't even look inhuman, so I'm not sure why they would have changed it. If anything, it just seems like they're going to as much effort as possible to try and disguise the fact that they are ripping off other people's videos. Oh, and I haven't even mentioned the fact that Tavo is making a complete mockery out of the entire thing by sipping coke and eating pizza between levels. What do you mean? I'm not entirely sure what the motive behind this Gamer fuel. choice was, because one might think they are trying to make it obvious this entire video is a joke, <laughs> but I'm not too sure about that. Given all of the effort they are going to to make this footage seem original and hide the fact that they stole it, it makes it seem as though they are playing this one straight. The original runs weren't credited, <laughs> there was no mention that this was a parody or fake or anything, and as you'll see later, he really tries to sell it as real. So I can only take the coke drinking and pizza eating as him trying to be unironically cool by playing at such a top level while eating and drinking. I love how ice cold he is. I'm just watching him in the cam. And there's just no emotion. In my opinion, there's it just comes nothing. Off as really douchey, though. Back to the run. In wow, come on, Carl. One, he goes back to the original TAS with all of the same issues, including the TAS only fast acceleration and mm -hmm. the flagpole glitch with no setup. To illustrate Tavo's cluelessness, before 4 2 begins, he reaches for a slice of pizza, but doesn't <laughs> even know if he has time or not. The indecisiveness results in his hand being off the controller when Tavo <laughs> starts moving. In 4 2, he steals footage from a different speedrunner. This time it's Cosmic, another one of the all-time- Bro, I- you know what though? 4 2 That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I gotta like- he's like, oh shit, is this- does this level- do I have a second? Results in I, his hand. Good on him for noticing though. I don't know why you couldn't just retake this though. It's five minutes. Just splice the footage together. <laughs> Who cares? That's just how good the pizza was. That pizza must have been so fucking tasty. You can't even resist it. You're on the run of your life. You're like, damn, I can smell it. You know what go great with this Coca-Cola? <laughs> it's being off the controller. Bro, now I want pizza. When Mario starts moving. Oh, In 4 2, me. he steals footage from a different speedrunner. This time it's Cosmic, another one of the all-time greatest Super Mario players. We got run different that was taken speed runs. 456.994, set on the 30th of May 2017. <laughs> Again, we can hear the audio clicks from Cosmic's controller as the video was ripped from the That's live amazing. stream. At a couple of moments, there are some pretty bizarre things happening in the display. A coin here, a brick there. <laughs> this is because the TAS hits a coin block here. There's a ghost a Mario. Here. The task finished These sewers are haunted! ...because it uses a much more complicated strategy in order to change oh my Mario's God. position, which allows the wrong warp to be performed. You can see how far it is ahead because of how quickly the display disappears compared to the level texture. <laughs> when Mario appears in the warp zone, we transition back to the original task, and the loading time between 4-2 and the warp zone is way quicker than it should be. 8-1 through to 8-3... Bro, I love his nodding in no between levels, he's like... In. The funny thing about 8-2 is that Mario is facing backwards for the entire time. Uh -huh. In order to do this, Mario has to perform a frame-perfect jump every single time he lands. Mm. It's kind of baffling why they would go to the trouble of splicing in realistic runs for other levels, <laughs> but keep in 8-2 from the task when it's so obviously unrealistic. <laughs> it also includes a crazy wall jump right before the end. 
He finishes 8 3 with 244 left. Bro, watch Tavo do this level. Just watch him. These are all frame the perfect no jumps. Runs mixed in. Watch the funny his face. Thing about 8-2 is that Mario is facing backwards for the entire time. <laughs> in order to do this, Mario has to perform a frame perfect jump every single time he lands. It's kind of heart rate 89.85, 89.85. My man is regular. Baffling why they would go to the trouble of splicing he in realistic gaming. for other levels, but keep in 8-2 from the task when it's so obvious. 89.85, 89.85. It also includes a crazy wall jump right before the end. He finishes that's my dude. with 244 left on the clock. Something that's impossible to do without the TAS only fast acceleration <laughs> at the beginning of the level. Bro, if so aliens ever come to this planet still and we need a cool champion 85. to play Super Mario By Bros, this is my fucking guy. Reached this stage of the run, Tavo go crazy. Had climbed to 130. The first three rooms of Bowser's castle are just Darbian's run again. All of the previous issues appear due to the cropped display. <laughs> it appears and disappears at the wrong times, and you can even see the tops of flying fish display. It appears and disappears at the You can do this? Oh, they disappear. I forgot that piranha plants disappear when the thing happens, like when you pick the route. I was going to say, like, can you just walk on a piranha plant? At the wrong times, and you can even Fuck see the tops of flying fish <laughs> I'm appear. going down here. When it gets to the underwater portion, it transitions back to the TAS. This is also pretty funny Bro, because Mario is flapping his arms. Up. This happens when the TAS-only fast acceleration is used underwater. <laughs> Mario is stuck in a state of facing both left and right, and we are able to maintain that state oh God, the that duration of the swim. What a you fake. don't actually need to keep holding right in order to keep your momentum underwater. Andrew G hilariously demonstrated this by juggling while swimming during an AGTQ run. <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good. Heading into Bowser, the TAS faces backwards until hitting the bridge switch, maintaining frame perfect jumps in Ooh, order to do so. Oh, I did that. I did that last to night. A blazing 95 beats per minute. Afterwards, when Mario gets to <laughs> the princess, there is another splice in the footage. I'm guessing this was because they needed to extend the end screen. That for that zoom? <laughs> this fucking zoom in? How dramatic. That's what it was, right? Hold on. When I Mario definitely saw a zoom. Skyrockets to a hold on. Blazing 95B. All right, hold on. And enhance. <laughs> oh, you can't see it. I'm in the way. Oh, sorry. Hold on. All right, here we go. My bad, my bad, my uh bad. Look at this shit. Look at this enhance. Ready? RTX on. <laughs> Bro, the bricks change. The bricks on the top and the bottom are different. <laughs> All right, I would have been able to see this. Tavo, how could you? You've let me down, bro. You know I love your channel. Afterwards, when Mario gets to the princess, there is another splice in the footage. I'm guessing this was because they needed to extend the end screen <laughs> so that Tavo could milk his reaction as much as possible. Drink some coke, bro. Speaking Drink of up. which, Tavo gives one of the greatest Delicious. performances I've ever seen. What? Did we take out the audio? It got copyright claimed. <laughs> What did he say? What could he have said? That's so funny. <laughs> what kills me here is the pizza. I don't think the pizza is a sponsor. The Coke is sponsored. But the pizza could be anything. He just wanted this. Delicious. Mmm. That's me when I beat Mario in under five minutes, too. Again, I'm confused. Is this supposed to be a cat? Does not look good. Yeah, th that pizza definitely looks like it was bought yesterday. <laughs> it looks like pizza that was left out on the counter and not microwaved. Special run or a terrific achievement. Why play the entire thing cool by eating pizza, only to then act like you've done something amazing? The entire presentation is just so incongruent. 
What's possibly the weirdest thing of all, though, is the mm -hmm. fact that the timer ends up being 5 minutes and 12 seconds, <laughs> even though the actual time of the run was 4 minutes and 54 seconds, as that was the Wait. final time for the task. Wait! Being clueless as to why the timer doesn't match up with reality, one reason could be that it's obviously just a self-made timer and Ooh. sucks at being accurate. That is probably the case. Wait, they didn't even do it under 5 minutes?! That was the whole point of the video! <laughs> Tavo! Clueless as to why the timer doesn't match up with reality. Too much pizza, bro. Cut the pizza out. A self -made timer if you cut the pizza out, that's under accurate. five minutes that for sure. That is probably the case. The other reason is that they knew the actual time of the TAS run they were basing the display off was faster than the world record. Holy and they shit. thought that beating the record by two seconds would make the fact that the run was fake a bit too obvious. But that begs the question, That's funny. if the final timer was so slow, why did they use such fast runs? They could have just stolen any hundreds of runs that were faster than 5 minutes and 12 seconds and then just you wouldn't an believe it. Timer. This He's got to be impressive. Believable. Another weird thing about the video is that he doesn't even start or stop a timer. He clearly hasn't watched any speedruns and has no idea how the speedrunners actually use their timers. The entire video is so strange and weird and his cluelessness just makes it more bizarre. The saddest part Bro, the best part of this is the way he drops his hands. He hasn't watched Watch this. The second that he kills Bowser, he drops the controller. In a moment of triumph. Watch this. Timer. He clearly hasn't watched Boom. Time. <laughs> Maybe he has an accelerometer in the controller. As soon as it bangs against the table, it's like done. Game's over. The emotions hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You realize Another what you've just thing accomplished. About the video is that he doesn't even start or stop. Time a for an ice cold Coca Cola. He hasn't watched any speedruns. Delicious. And has no idea how the speedrunners actually use their timers. The entire video is so strange and weird, and his cluelessness just makes it more bizarre. The saddest part about all of this is that if the channel actually did is a video this celebrating rules? and explaining the real speedrunners and their achievements, they probably could have gotten similar or even more views. A few months later, the speedrunner Bismuth made a oh, YouTube no. video explaining the world record, and his video received double the amount of views. He didn't oh, I thought he was going to expose them. Never mind. Badabun had either. Instead, he chose to steal footage from legitimate runners <laughs> that actually put the work in and tried to claim them as his own. There was no credit given whatsoever. It was just a shallow, pathetic attempt at creating a viral video. But Original it worked, I bet. Original content, my ass. Believe it or not, the real speedrunners still get comments on their videos suggesting that they stole footage from Bardabon. <laughs> Even in the event the creators of this video thought everyone would take it as a joke, they still That's should have given- What the fuck is this room? I didn't know what that was a picture of. It's Harley Quinn? An attack on Titan? Huh? Credit where it's due. I really do think this was an honest attempt at trying to fool people in order to get views. Now I want to give a huge shout out to That's Cosmic funny. for- Bro, look at this dude. 105 on the heart rate. Mm, you scared? You nervous? You're not gonna beat Mario? Not like my dude Tavo. My dude Tavo knows it's just a game. Oh, scared ass. Geek! It's just a video game. Tavo knows that. 89, 85, 89, 85, 89, 85. Tavo's ice cold, bro. 105. Ooh, I hope I get the world record. <laughs> They stole footage from Bardabon. That's funny. a joke. And to fool this video, I That's found funny. out about this video because Cosmic made a tweet about it after getting yet another comment suggesting that he stole his run from Bardabon. If you want to watch legitimate Super Mario Wait, gameplay, Mario died? He stole his run what? from Bardabon. Why he do if you that? about it after getting yet another comment suggesting that he stole Why he do that? His run from Bardabon. If you want to watch legitimate True Super ending. Mario <laughs> gameplay, you should definitely Where did Mario Cosmic go? <laughs> Peach is like, Peach just is like, what the fuck? <laughs> Where's Mario? And subscribe to his YouTube <laughs> channel. I will put a link to both. She doesn't even. Oh, she did say thank you. Okay, Cosmics never mind. And Darby's channels in the cool description. Cool trick. Please go and support real speedrunners. Thank you so much for watching, you legends. I hope you are having thank a you. fantastic day. And Pretty I good will movie. See you in the next video. Pretty good movie. Now I've got a challenge for you. Wait. Chat, I now have a challenge for you, okay? So I think this one was pretty clear, right? You guys all, when we got to this point, everybody was like, oh, I know when, what the cheating is. It's with the timer. The timer's going too fast. I said it was the coins, and you guys were like, no, Coney, it's not the coins. Well, I was perusing... Hello, 
through his videos. And guess what I found? Hold on. Wait. Can you spot the fake speed run? Hmm. Hello, you. If you're so fucking smart, you do it. You think you're so smart. I'm going to see if I can, because I got the first one right. You absolute legends. Do you think you have I can what do it, it takes to spot a fake speedrun? Absolutely. Over the past one and a half years, I've covered Absolutely. some notorious speedrunners that have Chat, tried don't to pass cheat. off cheated runs cheat as their own. All of them being foiled by some combination of stupidity, laziness, or ignorance. Once faked gameplay has been exposed, no, this one was real though. Has been compiled for easy this one was real. This it's one easy was to real. sit back and exclaim that such a run would have never gotten by this was you. A real run. But how hard is it this. really to detect evidence this. of tampering? In this video, I'm going to show you two example speed runs from three games: okay. GoldenEye, Super Mario Brothers, and Doom. One will be real, and one will be fake. Well, I don't know. The Doom. test will be to see if you can spot the difference. This won't be easy though, so be prepared to have no idea which is which. If you don't want to spend the brain power trying to figure it out, that's fine too. This video will still be entertaining as I will give you the answers and break down exactly how each faked run was created. Okay. For those who want to take a deep dive into each example, I've put the raw video files and demo- Man's is acting like fake speedruns are the greatest sin upon gaming. This guy fucking hates fake speedruns, bro. He, he has dedicated his life to eradicating fakers from the universe. Now, before we go on, this video is sponsored by Ray Raycon. Now, I have oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, you when don't. When it comes to... Not my audience, right, guys? Not my guys. Not my... Oh, by the way, hit exclamation point VPN for Surfshark. You can get four months for free with 83% off using the code Coney. Trying to cheat in GoldenEye 007, Frigate is by far the most notorious level. In the game's history, several of the top players have tried to pass off faked frigate runs as legit. Why? And this level in particular is one of the easiest to fake, given how the objectives work. Okay. Speedrunning frigate revolves around its first objective, rescue hostages. Scattered around the level are hostages that are being held captive. Uh -huh. Killing the specific guard holding them at gunpoint will allow them to begin running to a randomly selected exit point. Uh -huh. The problem that speedrunners face is that different exit points take differing amounts of time for the hostage to reach, Brother which random? means that in order to get the fastest time, only a single exit point can be chosen. The result is a level that is heavily dependent on RNG and oh, requires <laughs> lengthy grinds to get the luck you need. Bro, James Bond is going crazy here. But this I want to watch that movie. Itself to faked runs. If I could watch Task Goldeneye, a message shows up on screen. With Pierce so Brosnan, I would needed, the hostages won't I need to see that, bro. The message won't appear. But unfortunately, it's not that simple, as the objective can still complete in the second or so after the level has finished. Okay. This period of time is called the fade-out, for obvious reasons, and frigate because speedruns at the top level are generally so optimized that the objective complete message never appears at all, because the objective completes during the fade-out. <laughs> Visually, there is no discernible difference between a run where the hostages <laughs> have escaped and one where they didn't. Ah. This gave speedrunners the bright idea of capturing a run that otherwise seemed legitimate, even if the hostages didn't escape and splicing on a different end screen. Okay. One that they had forged using a game shark to complete all of the objectives. Now I know what to look The for. most famous example was a speedrunner by the name of Henning Blom, who spliced many runs. His frigate runs were eventually discovered to be fake because the weapon Bond was holstering during the fade out was different to the weapon that was <laughs> equipped when he finished the level. The weapon should always be the same. Wait. The runs were a speed runner How by do the you name miss that? Blum, who spliced many runs. How do you His miss that detail? I don't see him holding a weapon here. Because the weapon Bond was He's got the fucking Uzi there. Holstering during the fade out. That's funny. That's pretty good. That was equipped when he finished That's the level. funny, dude. The weapon should always You get everything else same. right except Obviously, for that. Obviously, the end screen was taken from a different run. Audio analysis eventually made the splice very apparent, Man. but it took years for the runs Analyze. to be exposed. It's important to point out that the end cinema that is played after the level has ended will only play if all of the objectives have completed. Therefore, if any splicing is done, the ending cinema will have to be from a different run out of necessity. Mm. Objective A okay. doesn't always complete in the fade out though, and a minority of runs do show the objective complete message on screen, uh -huh. even if it's just for a frame. These runs are more trustworthy and raise far less questions. 
You are about to watch two runs that I performed on Frigate Agent. Okay. There are only two objectives here, rescue hostages and plant tracking bug on helicopter. The hostages are released first as you want to give them enough time to escape, followed uh -huh. by a throw of the tracker bug to the helicopter that's placed at the rear of the ship. <laughs> here are the runs. What a throw. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Okay, has the the Uzi out, I think. Go through there, get that guy, go through here, blast him. I'm watching the ammo. Watching the ammo. Hit start. He got hit. Did his health drop? He got shot. Didn't see the health go down. Hmm. Hmm. He now's a phantom. Tracker bug on pirate. Okay. Looked pretty normal to me. That looked pretty good. He's a good player. I think that one's real. All right, here's the second one. Bro, this one looks faster. Bro, this dude's zooming. He didn't get shot. What? Wait. Never mind. I thought I had something. So look, look, look. I I was positive this was good. Look, because he has 1320. 1220. Okay? I was like, damn, 1220. But watch. When he brings it back, it says 32. But that's the same. But he didn't reload. Can you do that? Hmm. Reloads on weapon swap. Uh. Fuck. Is that the right gun? That's the right gun. They're both real. They're both real. I believe them both. I think they both did it. How could I have... How could I know? I didn't know anything. Hold on. Let me look at the final frame, the objectives at the end. Because it came up at the very end. Objective A completed. Okay. Okay. Maybe not. Splices are okay. If history teaches us any Dude, I have if no history idea. History teaches us anything about I have frigate, no idea. That gen if I have to guess for the payout Two is fake. Generally splices are caught by discrepancies fake. in the fadeout or the end screen. Two is fake. This could be showing the incorrect weapon or even some incorrect statistics right. showing after the run. So we'd check those first, including the amount of shots fired, where the shots hit. Oh, I didn't even think of that! God damn it! And how many kills there were. Detecting a splice can also be done by analyzing the audio signal oh. for any gaps or anomalies. I do think that as far as audio goes, it is possible to splice frigate runs without it showing any traces, <laughs> but it's not Damn what it. I did here. There is no splicing in these runs. The method of choice for faking this run was by using a game shark. 
Most game sharks will come with codes already programmed in, okay. including one that completes all of the objectives for you. But these aren't usable here because the objective complete messages come up on screen as soon as you start the level. So a new code was created to complete the objective during the fade out. <laughs> there is one detail about the run that I had to ensure was present in the faked run. And that's a message that appears several seconds before I... the end, confirming that one hostage had escaped. Uh -huh. One of the two hostages escapes much earlier and has much better odds of escaping. So it's not hard to get a run where they do actually escape. Uh -huh. But this message has to be in the run either way. Otherwise, it's definitely fake. The fact that we know one of the runs is fake, but both had Objective A on screen, makes the decision of what to focus on pretty easy. This message did not appear in the failed run, so I needed to extract it with Photoshop, and paste it into the video in Sony Vegas. Uh -huh. While the photoshopping was terrific, there was one small detail that I overlooked. The objective completed text in GoldenEye is outlined by a gradient that blends into the background. Okay. This means that if the text is placed in front of a green background, the gradient will blend from white to green. Oh my god. In both runs, the objective completed message appears over Come a blue background, on. but one of the messages had a grey outline. This is out of place and happened because I grabbed the message from a Are different you run where it appears over me? a grey background. Using this information, we can ascertain that the fake speedrun was indeed example number one. Fuck! God damn it! How could I have known that? How could I? I was watching the game itself, dude! Okay, hold on. Wait. Let me, let me watch it again. They looked the same. Okay, hold on. This is objective B completed. Okay? Objective B completed looks like that. That looks the fucking same. That looks the same. What are you talking about? It's so obviously different. Okay. Come up with a message from. I think he's lying. Though, and had the run of being. Bro, no. At the end of this video, he's gonna be like, "Also, I was lying. I was lying the whole time." I hope he does that. Super at the Mario end. Brothers is a N when it appears in the water. Dumb. So it blended in as it should. This color discrepancy These is are both real runs. Though, he was the lying run the whole time. To the rankings, I don't think anyone would have ever Stupid. noticed. The fact that Objective A appears on screen at all is enough to quell any doubt that the run is legit. Come on. Super Mario Brothers is a game that needs no introduction. It's one of the best selling games of all time and kicked off the highest selling video game franchise in history. Okay. Even when it comes to speedruns of the game, it seems to be insanely popular, with new world records finding their way into the news feeds of even the most casual gamers. But despite its popularity, many people are still relatively clueless about the subtleties of the game. Not and me, when though. a video of a speedrun goes viral, it is inevitably followed by an avalanche of accusations of cheating. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with a bit of skepticism when That's viewing funny. new records, but the reasons people use to justify their claims of foul play tend to be pretty misguided and uninformed. They will point to things like Mario seemingly passing through enemies or piranha plants. Or the timer going fast. Chat. Without taking damage or dying. If you don't know anything about how the game works, this does seem strange. Idiots. But it's definitely a byproduct of the way the game was designed <laughs> and is in no way evidence of cheating or hacks. In order for <laughs> a speedrun to be accepted to the official rankings, Casuals. it must be verified by at least one moderator, who is generally another speedrunner and an expert in the game. A scenario in which a casual viewer spots something that flew under the radar of a leading expert seems pretty unlikely. It's definitely possible. Calls us idiots someone, but couldn't spot the fake 007 run. It's literally impossible! To find a way to fool other speedrunners, but odds are it would be that something fooled that is anyone. so subtle it would require very deep analysis to spot. If you don't know much about a game and something looks strange in a speedrun, it's probably just a gap in knowledge sure. rather than an attempt to deceive you. Uh -huh. This isn't the case though when it comes to non speedrunners trying to impress gullible audiences. Case in point, Butterborn. 
who probably fooled <laughs> many again. people with their <laughs> not again stolen footage speed oh, run. No. Many this guy hates Butterbun. Something was off about the run, but when this guy will never let them live it down. Solid evidence, and you need to. I think this one's fake. This one's fake. Isn't possible. This one's fake. the smallest detail. That one's fake. Many things in speed running seem impossible or fake upon first viewing, but are actually very real and a result of thousands of hours of practice and an unhealthy understanding of a game's mechanics. You are about to watch two runs of the very first level. One is a legitimate speedrun, oh one is not. Okay. This time, the speedruns will be captured through a camera pointed at a TV, which is still an acceptable way to provide You can do proof. that? This may or may not affect what options are available for someone looking to cheat. <laughs> you Good asshole. Luck. Okay. Oh, God. All right. Okay. Wait. Does this count? Timer says 385, but then when he goes down, it says 384 instead of 380. Does that count? Does that? I'm analyzing, bro. <laughs> I'm actually like super analyzing. Okay, how many coins? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine coins. Checks out. Seems good. Wait, how did his score get so high? He probably killed a Goomba. Hmm, okay. Wait. They said that was te no, he said people could do that. Hmm. Fuck. Okay. It's the same. That took a while to load. That took longer to load, right? Am I crazy? Huh. Hold on. Yeah, bro, that loaded mad fast. Like that. Right? Am I... Fuck. It has to do with the timer, right? Or the, the, the loading. Right? No way they would make one fake twice. Right? Hold on. Hold on. It's the loading. It has to be the loading. Was it when he came out of the pipe? That. It was immediate. But on this one... He takes mad long. Am I wrong? Is it- wait, 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 wait. Did something happen here? No, the TV just turned off. <laughs> I thought something happened. Oh! It's the same clip. It's the same clip. It's the same thing. They're both the same. <laughs> They're the same. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me watch one more time. One second. 
I'm pretty sure one is fake for the loading time. Because that's mad quick. Right? I think it's one. Okay. The clicks sound the same. Like the controller, you know? Was the loading the same on both? I think it was. This is why Cody can't be an umpire. Shut up! Is one. One's fake. The most common way people try to cheat one is in fake. Super Mario is to pre-program a run and play it back in an emulator. Okay. Using an emulator isn't specifically against the rules. However, there are very strict requirements that are enforced in order to prevent such one simple is deception. Rules such as including the end of the previous attempt and showing the reset. Players using an emulator must also provide the input file, and if their runs are particularly good, they must stream all of One's their fake. attempts. It's an emulator. Unless One's you fake. are very familiar with the game, it might be difficult to tell if you're watching a run played on an emulator, Not for me. but the experts I can tell. definitely tell. Yeah, I can the tell. resolution and aspect ratio is different, but the difference is small, and a casual viewer likely wouldn't know the I'm difference. I'm not a casual, though. Both I of tell. these runs were played out on a real Nintendo console. Oh. An emulator wasn't used. And oh. as such, everything shown was theoretically possible for a human to execute. Okay. Both runs look very similar. Then why did he say that? Why did he do that? Why did he set me up to look like stupid? Why did he do that? I hate this fucking guy. I'm never watching his but video these, again. These subtle differences that tend to give things He's away. He's so cringe. The entire level is pretty straightforward, with the only difficult trick being at the very end, the flagpole glitch. Uh -huh. This requires a very specific setup to do consistently, as it needs sub-pixel precision, which is something that a human just can't detect. Uh -huh. If you look at the world record speedrun played by Cosmic, which shows his exact inputs on screen, you can see that there is a period of several frames before the final jump where he releases the B button. This is part of the setup in order to perform the glitch, and it causes a noticeable drop in forward speed for a very brief moment. In our example runs, example 1 clearly shows this momentary slowdown, yes! while example 2 Wait. shows no slowdown. No! Both examples show a glitch that is perfectly normal, no! humans, but example 2 does it in a way that no human ever no! will, as you will never be able to replicate it in real speedrun attempts. This is the telltale sign that example 2 is the fake speedrun. God damn it, dude! Just because it was played on a real console does not exclude it from being a pre-programmed run. Wait, okay, wait, this so the it's the speed at the end. Example two is the fake speed run. Just it's the speed this at the end. The Hold on, I need to see it. Let me see the speed at the end. I'll be the judge of that. Oh, he does slow down a little bit. He does slow down a little bit, doesn't he? And this cheating ass Mario doesn't. Oh my god. Cheating ass Mario. Being at the bro. very end, the f up in order to. Whatever, I'll get Doom. Duplicated. Doom is the game I know the least, by the way. <laughs> I know nothing about Doom. I know absolutely zero about Doom. In real this speed old run. ass Video game. On a computer and replay on a okay. run. These days, you can buy hardware that. As you would up in right. order to perform. In our ex while example okay. two shows no slowdown at all. Both examples show a glitch that is perfectly normal in speedruns, but example two does it in I'll a get way doom. that no I'll get human doom. ever I'll get would, doom. as you would never I will be able get to doom. replicate it in real speedrun attempts. This is the telltale sign that example two is Come the fake speedrun. Just because it was played on a real console does not exclude it from being a pre-programmed run. These days, you can buy hardware that can take runs constructed on a computer and replay them on a real console, which is Neat. what was done in this case. In the faked GoldenEye run, it was video analysis that gave it away. In the Mario example, it was unrealistic gameplay. The third example will be something else. Let's take a look. <laughs> what is it? Oh god. In March of last year, 4 Shock Blast beat a 20-year-old Doom record when he Doom achieved is so 8 fucking seconds fast! 
The video I made covering this event was my first ever to go viral. Oh Every God. several months or so, I jokingly ask the Doom speedrunners to beat the record on the very first level of Doom 2. In 1998, Thomas Pilger achieved a time of 5 seconds on ultraviolet speed. A record Nyeong. that has stood for 22 years. Damn. If it was beaten, it would make for a terrific video. The consensus at the moment is that a time of 4 seconds on ultraviolence isn't humanly possible. There just isn't enough time to reasonably save. But something pretty incredible happened in early May of this <gasps> year. Someone did the Doom it. speedrunner known as Depravity achieved a time of 4.97 seconds in the No Monsters category. Let's go! Frame below 5 seconds. Good job, if this Depravity! If any other category, this would get far more attention and praise. Playing Doom without monsters just doesn't feel the same. But in terms of movement, this is seemingly the most precise no monsters category ever completed. It goes without saying that the run's short length makes it easier to get a perfect run, but still, the run is essentially flawless. You are about to see two runs oh of God. four seconds. Oh one God. is legitimate, one is not. Oh God. Good luck. Oh. No way I get the third one wrong. It's four seconds long. Okay. My eye hurt. I don't know Doom. Okay. All right. It's the same video. You showed me the same video twice. Okay. Hold on. Short length. You are about to... Good luck. Okay. 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 Enhance. Analyze. Okay. What did that say at the top? Picked up a clip. Okay. Pushes on the door, gets stuck on it. He like goes up the door a little bit. You see that? He like went up a little bit. Hmm, okay. On this one. He backs up first. Why does he bounce? Wait, that's the view, Bob? Yeah, but no, he doesn't back up as much in the first one. It's something to do with the bobbing. Button pro the Fuck Two is fake. Wait, I'm gonna watch the guy at the bottom. Let wait, no, 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 no. I'm not doing it yet. I'm not doing it yet. I'm gonna watch the guy at the bottom. It's something obvious. I'm watching Doom Guy look around. <laughs> it's gonna be something very obvious. Okay, it's not that. Ooh. 
right? <gasps> Wait. Wait. Does he always do the same thing? Wait. Is Doom Guy program? Okay, watch. He goes left, right, left, straight. Right, left, right, straight. And on this one, he goes left, right, left, straight. Right. Okay, it's the same. <laughs> it's the same. I really thought I had something. I really thought I had something. I didn't know if it was RNG or what. I thought it... I don't know why it would... Yeah. Oh, oh my goodness! Thank you, Twin Rivers! Thank you! Hey, Cody. Also, you having Kayla. a rough day, but wanted to let you know you're my favorite content Thank you man, so much! And I genuinely always wish the best for you. Thanks! Also, you killed Kayla. Okay, and I'm gonna refund your donation. Please leave my stream and never come back. Don't truing about Kayla. The monster killed her. Falsing. The monster did that. Two's fake! I'm going with my gamer instinct. It's my gut reaction. Two is fake. Watch this. Two's fake. Two's fake. Two's fake. Two's fake. Two's fake. Because the bounce. He hit the bounce on it. At the end of the run, just before the yep. final button bounce. press, it appears as though depravity hits the door. Those familiar with Doom speedrunning might jump to the conclusion that this lost time, because normally, hitting the door would cause you to lose yep. all of Don't your momentum. Don't hit the door. Door's but stuck. in this case, he uses a very, very, very precise trick called momentum preservation that mm -hmm. allows him to keep his speed and saves a single frame. I'm going to be honest with you, unless you are a Doom expert, and unless you downloaded the demo files, and knew exactly what to look for, you wouldn't have been able to identify which run was fake. But it's two. Visually and strategically, these runs are basically identical. No, The run that was fake. fake was example number two. Yeah! Doom expert! Doom expert! King of Doom! Prince of Hell! Pay out. Pay out the believers. I fucking told you. I fucking told you. I even knew it was the door thing. I fucking told you. This run was originally a 5.09 that Depravity had achieved so before obvious. getting 4. Which so he then obvious. frame by frame to fix up the time losses and create the perfect run. Is what happens when you go frame by frame to pick up the time losses and create the perfect run, you fucking dope. Because Depravity knows what is or isn't realistic, the execution of the faked run is indistinguishable from the real run. Indistinguishable from the real any run. Never unrealistic inputs or techniques that a human wouldn't perform. However, even with the wait, so it's actually in the demo files and nothing visual. Isn't that like not fair to me, the viewer? No, but thanks for your this points. Knowledge of strategy, it's still possible to detect that the demo had been edited. This secret is too dangerous to give away though, and recently there have been a few people that have tried to edit demos and pass them off as real, each getting caught and rightfully removed from the community. Damn, dude! This is fucked up! Poor Kringle Chimp! Zero Master, you didn't have to be so mean to Kringle Chimp! He was totally taken aback, bro. What did I do? Deserved? What do you mean? It's doom. <laughs> Just a little chaos goblin creating some 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 entropy in your little speed running community. Come on. It would be a very, Maybe very he's a difficult monkey. challenge to get a faked run past the doom experts. The level at which doom they can experts. analyze demos is really impressive. As time goes on and speedruns become more and more intricate and complex, it will become even more difficult for casual viewers to understand and by extension trust world record runs. But just know that they always require verification from moderators hmm. who know the games better than anyone. Generally the top players are required to stream all of their attempts, both to prove their skill and minimize all the of chance them? of artificial Holy manipulation. Shit. Streaming attempts is incredibly important to building credibility and may become mandatory for many games in the future. Ultimately, Yeesh. I think performances in live oh, events shit. will grow in value and it's perhaps cheese. one day will be the most legitimate form of speedrunning competition.
A big shout out to Cosmic for providing the Mario examples and also Depravity for the Doom ones. Neat. I will put a link to their channels in the description. Please go and show appreciation by subscribing to them. You know what? I, 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 I got the first two wrong, but once I started to understand it, it was so easy to get that third one. Hey, I'm a verified speedrun mod mod moderator. Is that what they're called? Speedrun moderator now. I can tell if any run is fake. Especially Doom. Doom is my specialty, I will say. I, I know Doom like the back of my hand. I'm a big fan of Doom. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. Hey, uh, well, I guess I don't know if this is, is this an outro? Are we gonna, whatever. I don't know. Maybe this will be an outro. <laughs> I guess. Like the video. Bye. <laughs> bye. Say bye, YouTube. Is this YouTube? I don't know. I'll do this anyway. Bye. I didn't do an intro or anything. Bye. I guess. If you're watching this in the future. Bye. <laughs> I guess. Fine. Whatever. All right. There's a video that came out a few days ago. Thank you so much. That I haven't been able to watch yet. It's by a channel I really like. You probably know about it. They talk about melee. <laughs> awesome sauce? Awesome sauce? Awesome sauce. Melee stupid advantages. 350k very quickly, by the way. This shit came out uh, December 23rd. Good for this guy, bro. He's popping off. I haven't seen this one yet. No dislikes either. Good point. Did you see Small Ant did a Minecraft speedrun but recorded National Treasure 2 instead? What? What are you talking about? <laughs> How did he do that? I don't think he did that by accident. <laughs> I think that's a joke. How would he have done that? Can't be real. And the overwork. Hold on. Small ant. This is the worst day of my life. I was watching National Treasure. What is going on with the education in America? Hey. Let's go! Let's... No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, it's Connor. No. No. That is extremely funny. That is one of the funniest things I've ever seen. That is amazing. I'm going to drop the retweet on that. That is extremely funny. It was world record. <laughs> that can't be real. This is a bit. It has to be a joke. That's really funny. That is extremely funny. Oh, dude. Even if it's a bit, it's a very funny one. I. That's very funny. And hurry Excellent said, movie. Let there be bugs. <laughs> and there were bugs. That's good. Some harmless, some... Big ass fist! I did know about this one. Bowser got a big ass punch. Glaringly apparent. Some small and insidious. Now it's just Marth. But surprisingly, mad. some of the strangest and recently most irksome jank of all was intentional. See, when you're developing a game where two opposing players can do actions simultaneously, you have to make some decisions on what happens when, say, they attack at the same time. Uh-huh. And so the developers brainstormed. Do they recoil back from the other's respective blow? Do they both go flying? They Does should. a stronger move just override the other? That's cheap. Fuck it. All three. <laughs> but what Amazing. happens when two characters grab each other at the same time? Well, for this dilemma, the great minds at HAL Laboratories threw out any semblance of actual gameplay deciding and instead opted to create a system based on which port your controller is plugged into. Wait. Is this just a whole video about ports? This is just about port priority? 
If two characters grab each other at the oh same time, God. the player with their controller plugged into the highest port, the one closest to the first port, oh, highest port will wins? always get the grab. Bro, at least they changed that for Brawl. Have a little bit of balance. That's good. Similarly, if two characters attempt to grab the ledge at the same time, the player with the higher port wins there too. That's cheap. That's Mechanics fucked up. Mechanics like these ones are known as port priority. Now, knowing just what I told you, you might think the highest port always has an advantage over the lower ports. I would think that. But it's not so simple. A likely less intentional example of port priority is how throwing opponents changes based on which port you're plugged into. Say Peach in port 2 throws Falco in port 1. Uh huh. Everything is as you'd expect. Falco's hit stun animation after being thrown plays to completion. Yeah, you're getting chain grab. At yeah. which point he's actionable again. In this case, on frame 44. However, if we switch the ports and Peach in port one throws Falco in port two, something strange happens. Despite Peach doing the same throw on Falco at the same percentage, Falco has one less frame of pay out and thus getting the fuck out of the chain grab frame earlier. What's going on here? Sick. Well, let's take a look at the bird. If we go the to the bird's last mighty frame clean, of his hit bro. stun in both cases. We see their identical frames. However, comparing the first frame after Peach throws them reveals oh, what's shit. happening. See how they're distinctly different poses? All right. Why? Now watch what happens on frame two of this Falco's animation. Little brother advantage. Oh my God! This son of a bitch skipped a frame. Oh, cheating ass! I hate Falco, bro. And started the animation on frame two. This son of a bitch stays cheating. Getting grabbed by Peach. Meaning, Eat your chain grab, motherfucker. Cases end on the same oh, pose. cheating Four ass. Two Falco has one less frame of animation to go through before reaching that point and exiting hit stun, effectively giving Falco, Falco in port bro. one a single extra frame of hit stun with which the Peach has to follow up. Has this ever mattered? I guess it has. In the history of Melee, I'm positive there have been circumstances where, like, you know, a prolific Peach player is chain grabbing a pro prolific Falco player and it didn't work for whatever reason. And thanks to this huh. fuck up affecting every <clears throat> single throw in the entire game, oh. this means higher port players have worse throws than lower port every players. Every throw? No joke. Hmm. So, in short, if your opponent plugs their controller in here, and you plug your controller into here or here, you will have slightly better throws than them, which would, marginally, help you with following up on your throws. In addition to extending some chain grabs for a bit more- I go percent, lower port, bro. I'm always in four. Making I pick four no matter what. Lows. True. But That's before insane. exploring the consequences of the hit stun difference, let's first look at a couple situations where the one frame offset in animation makes things behave oddly. For example, the offset in animation determines whether Mr. Game & Watch bounces from Dr. Mario down throwing him. <laughs> what? This is because, as what? the higher port, Mr. Game & Watch's first frame of hit stun places his character position beneath the stage which results in him just being placed on it. This game fucking sucks! What? This is your favorite game? This is your favorite game? Characters could just decide whether or not they bounce off the ground? Why does anybody still play this? Conversely, because lower this port old game piece of skips shit. this frame, his works as intended. Come to ultimate, bro. Our game works. In Ultimate, you will always know what a character will do in 100% of circumstances all the time. In Ultimate, you can always guess with 100% precision exactly what will happen in an interaction, and that's a Coney guarantee. The difference in animation also causes Falco's down throw on Fox at certain percents to be either good for Falco or 
advantageous for Fox. Dude, I've actually always wondered this. This isn't even a joke. I've always wondered why sometimes... Falco's down throw on Fox at certain percents to be either... I've always wondered why sometimes people get to scramble out, and sometimes it's like I feel I felt like down throws in melee didn't make sense. That's Good crazy. For Falco or advantageous for Fox? Come on. For reasons I don't understand, huh. but of course the big deal with port priority is the one frame. Fox's helmet kind of looks like underwear. Not gonna lie. Different. I can't go with you on this. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't... What the fuck are you talking about? Look from the back of the head? How? Is there like a model viewer? Melee Fox model viewer. Is there a way to do this on the internet? No way. Where's Fox? What? I've downloaded Fox. <laughs> uh, here he is. <laughs> this doesn't help me. I think I got the wrong. I think I got the wrong. What do I click on here? Is this his textures? Okay, it didn't work. It didn't work. I downloaded Fox from Melee. Here, here's Star Fox from, from here. This is from... Okay. No. Do you mean it's like a like a jock strap? No. It's like an upside down jock strap. Upside down diapers. <laughs> it's too thin to be a diaper. No. I get what you're trying to say, but no. You could say anything looks like a fucking diaper. It just looks like a bull with horns. You could say this looks like a diaper upside down. Do you see what I'm saying? It's just something in the middle with two things on... Don't true. Don't true what I said. Stop. Stop. It's just a... It's... It's... It's just a wrap. You guys are so dumb. It's in hit stun. I mean, look at your underwear and try it live. I, players grabbing either each other or the ledge on the chat. same exact frame is pretty rare, but getting thrown by an opponent, it's not unusual that this happens several times a stock. Just how much does this one frame really matter, though? True. Not very much, in my opinion. But this death looks like a diaper. I should not click this. You know, when you look at it like this, it kind of does. When you look at it in lower quality, I kind of see it. Me. I kind of see that. Let's hear some. Fox got a diaper on his fucking head. He's like Ric Flair. And the global plups opinions on port priority. Oh shit! What are we thinking? Just so hard to get in on that character, man. Hmm. What do you do? I mean, the plop, right? plop, yum big. yum. And I want, if I could complain, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Allow me. The floor yeah. is yours, friend. I, I really am bummed out about poor priority in this matchup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were, we were talking, talking about, about it. Yeah, we're talking about it. it sucks. He gets free <laughs> up throw up tilt if he's a higher port and he won the RPS. So.
Yeah. I would just wow. eat him down. Wow. That's really unfortunate. I don't know what to do about that, though. I mean, he really? probably wouldn't have won anyway because he was just, like, really hard to get in on it. But, but does it really become free? And how many times did Port Priority make an otherwise fake combo true? Right. Oh, no. Plup's getting analyzed. <laughs> Is it actually free, or are you just a whiny bitch? <laughs> I would never want to be good at Melee. <laughs> You're at people analyzing 20 years of footage. Oh, no. That makes up to true. Oh, different. no. Uh-huh. Let's examine frame by frame every single time Zane threw Plup in this entire set. See how many getting times called Zane out for John's. Frame. Yeah, why can't I just make excuses in peace, huh? Leave me alone, please. Leave me the fuck alone. Not the, oh no. Not every interaction. Perfectly after each one to take advantage of Plup's one oh, frame longer no. animation and count the number of. This guy hates Plup. This guy fucking hates Plup. Times this. This was made by Golden Guardians. I'm gonna get Panda to copyright strike this video. Bro, I'm gonna get Panda to take this shit down. This is harassment. This is harassment. I'm getting them struck in immediately. Single extra frame of hit stun truly swayed the interaction in Zane's favor. To do that, all we have to do is check the number of frames of hit stun these throws in this set subjected Plup to. Find which frame of How did he get like perfect footage here, by the way? Hit stun Zane followed up on, then take the extra port priority frame away. If Plup is still in hit stun on the slippy? frame Zane followed up, port priority. I don't really know how Slippy works. Does it like record stuff? Huh. Priority didn't matter. However, <laughs> if Plup isn't in hit stun after we do this, then Port Priority did make Zane's combo true. Okay, so if his ass is tumbling. Doing this for all of these throws, the results are surprising. Of the 45 times Zane threw Plup, 21 were followed by a frame perfect action by Zane. Wow. And only four of those, each in the third game on Final Destination, resulted in true combos thanks to Port Priority. Shut up! The other 17 frame perfect actions either didn't lead to anything on Zane's end Come on, man. or were true combos regardless of port. Come on. But keep in mind, even if these four follow-ups were true combos because of port priority, each attack connected right on the extra frame. And done instead on the first frame, Plup is out of hit stun. This guy loves Even Zane. though they're no longer true combos, Plup would have had to act out of hit stun frame perfectly with an- He's not thinking of the mind game. That's true. What he fails to consider is the mind game happening at top level. Aerial or special move. Good point. Something that goes without saying is pretty hard. Or Plum buffer a double detected. jump to hopefully get out. And even if he did act out of hit stun in these situations, there's a oh. good chance he wouldn't have been able to contort Sheik's body in such a way to dodge a follow up. Yes, a frame he would perfect have. air dodge after hit stun wouldn't have helped because air dodging doesn't make you invincible for. This reminds me of when Logic swore that he would have gotten... At, I have a story for you guys. Frame one. I have a story after this. It's about the judo up smash. The Sheik. You know what I'm talking about? It's just such a funny story. I'll tell... It, it was at school's in session. I'll show you after this. It was... Uh, it's very funny. I've told it on stream before, but not with this many viewers. I'll show you after this. It was very funny. Testing, I found only one of these follow-ups could be jumped or aerialed out of. Judo up smash? Yeah. How did you know about that Zeldrio underscore 16? It blows my mind sometimes when people in chat just like, whose name I don't recognize, show up and they just know stories. I'm like, what the fuck? How do you know about the judo up smash? That's crazy. Oh, and get this. For that's this throw, insane, if we dude. Apply Plup's exact Ancient Lurker. DI yeah, that's, up throw that's up amazing. With the port lurkers? Hey, bro, if you guys are lurkers, I stand with you. I'm in your walls. <laughs> that's funny. I, I, I'm a lurker as well. I, I lurk in every stream. I always forget. Yeah, listen, I lurkers... 
You are my people. Thank you, it's lurkers, swapped. for lurking. It actually connects a... Get, d make, make sure to lurk during all the bounties, please. That means a lot to me. ...frame earlier, because Sheik is on a different, slightly more vertically aligned frame of her getting thrown animation, thanks to port priority. Making it a true combo anyway. <laughs> that noise. Now, excusing the jank for a moment, let's be honest here. One frame just doesn't make a lot of difference when it comes to avoiding a follow-up. Copium. Think of it this way. If several of the world's best players can get many, many, many fake combos and regrabs on countless top foxes and falcos, two of the few characters that actually have a frame one move, this single frame, port priority or not, hit stun or no hit stun, probably isn't the deciding factor between a follow-up connecting or not. I'm honestly asking here because I don't know. Does Melee have... Is this guy spitting here? Like, does Melee ever matter in the single frame? Like, is there... St like, obviously, Shine comes out frame one. Uh, Rest comes out frame one. Because, like... I feel like with how chunky melee is and how specific it is to sort of move your stuff. Yes and no. Sometimes. Okay, so we're just getting non-committal answers. <laughs> the issue is more likely your pathetic human reflexes being unable to consistently act in a 16 millisecond window. Or a jump's distance just not being enough. Now, don't get me wrong. This extra... Dumb question. Very dumb question. If Hbox mashes the fuck out of down B here, can he hit it frame one? Yes, that's how it works, right? Okay. I was going to say, I didn't know in Melee if it worked. Like, I know there's no buffer, obviously. But, like, is there an instance where if you hit something before, it locks out? I didn't think so, because that's stupid. But I don't know, because I don't fucking play Melee, so. It's distance just not being enough. Now, don't get me wrong. This extra frame Zane got to work with is fucking stupid and has no place in a competitive environment. And ideally, the it's number a party of game. Gets a true combo Nerd alert! Because he won rock, play paper, street scissors fighter. for port four should be zero. But it doesn't exactly make follow ups for. Bro, Plup gave up immediately. Watch this. Should be zero. Plup loses RPS. But he lost the mind game. Watch this. It doesn't exactly make follow-ups. He already gave up. He tapped out. He tapped. He actually pog into. Bro, I lost. You need that. Need that competitor's resolve, brother. You need that true grit. The mental boom. Free. Why don't they just swap ports every game? That's a good question. Right? I mean, like, for ultimate, you can't do it because you would have to change tags and shit. But tags don't mean anything in Melee for controls. We need a new rule, bro. Because it's one frame? Clearly one frame matters, bro. Loser gets to pick port. Ah. Interesting. Okay. Mm. Done talking about it Or now. just don't play melee. True. Yeah, good point. You know what? No, I'm not. It just doesn't make things free. In fact, to claim it's anything more Cody than largely rule. unimportant requires ignoring how one extra frame of action ability just normally isn't enough to escape a throw follow-up. Plus, how small the percent ranges are that it makes combos true. Bro, this guy hates less plup. Than this guy hates plup. And finally, he fucking how hates plup. To make those combos true, or even benefit from the extra frame of hit stun at all. He hates at plup, least bro. One frame perfect input, and sometimes several. Zane, arguably the best player in the world, doesn't even act frame perfectly out of his throws half the time. But still. A fix for this has existed for years. Why Damn, isn't it standard yet? All right, enough about that. Let's talk about 
spawn positions. Okay. You know when you spawn in on that floating platform at the beginning of a game? Dude, I forgot Melee you had these. You notice on Slippy how you and your opponent are always spawned on opposite ends of the stage? Wait, that's why you can't do port stuff, because, like, four is up here, right? Yeah, that oh, doesn't happen shit. on Vanilla Melee. Instead, the spawn points are placed rather arbitrarily. Yeah. Here on Dreamland, for example, port one spawns here in the middle of the stage, but port two spawns up on the so left platform. So you have to platform. do two and four and for neutral start. And on Battlefield, start. port yeah. two spawns on the top platform. Or three and four for battle. Oh my god. above where port one spawns. That's tough. But what does this matter? Well, imagine you have a more wacky arrangement of plugins, such as port one and port four. Perhaps you and your opponent played rock, paper, scissors for the lowest port. That's a pretty rough spot to spawn at on Stadium as port <laughs> four, don't you think? Oh, God. Well, hold on. You're under. You're under him, right? I mean, you have no stage, but you, ha you have position. Land an up air, bro. Land up air. Free back air. <laughs> This is where you counterpick everybody and you say, I get to be port one Donkey Kong. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> port one DK go crazy. I don't even know if Donkey Kong's back air is especially good in melee. What's a very good back air? Like, other than the obvious ones. I'm trying to think of, like... Oh, Jigglypuff, obviously, right? DK back air, is it good? Ness? No. I'm thinking... I'm trying to think of a shitty character that gets immensely buffed from this position. Motherfucker just shield drop back air. Sheik? I guess, yeah. I guess everybody's back air is good, but I'm trying to think of something extended, you know? Completely oh, that's funny. backed into a corner. That's funny. And, uh, I mean, it's not surprising by the edge, but Crouch gives you a thing with. Oh, shit! Just knock him off stage. Whoa! <laughs> the spawn position! Oh my god! The spawn position is so good for Mewtwo King! Oh, what a cool and game. What a cool game, bro. Right honestly, though, honestly, though, honestly, looking at this objectively, as fat, first option here is to shield. Pussy, you lost the mind game. Go up air him. Go up air him right now. Hit him. You're under him. Up air, up air, up air, up air. Bro, this is 90 damage if you do it correctly. You're Fox. Backed into a corner. This is so funny. I, I didn't realize it was this crazy in melee. That's so funny. And, uh, I mean, it's not surprising <laughs> by the edge, but Crouch can do think we just knock him off. 6 stage. 4. <laughs> True. Whoa, 60 40. Spawn position. <laughs> a bashing illusion out of that corner. Bro, if I spawn under a Marth on Stadium, shoo, I'm mashing side B. Get me the fuck out of here. Shoo. <laughs> Oh my god, the spawn position is so good for Mewtwo That's King. That's funny. Wait, he also spawned after Mewtwo King? Wait, timing is a thing too? Surprising. By Wait. The Did I just miss that? <gasps> Mewtwo King hits the ground here. No, one, two, three, four, five, six. Holy fucking shit, dude. Oh my god, he had a full, what is that, six frames? That's a tenth of a second. Knock him off stage. This game oh, fucking again, rules, dude. Oh my god. I love, so so I right love esports. I love esports, bro. Right or even more fucked, having you and your teammates spawn on these platforms and the opposing team spawn below. Ready? Oh. <laughs> or clip, spawning above a character that excels at juggling opponents. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who do you think is the favorite here? I think, I think it's man. Six, four, How do you get down, ooh, dude? Ooh, double ooh. there. That he sucks right. so Ball, bad. Zipper. Done. All right. That's a there stock one. That double there was sick nasty. How do you get down? But that's not the end of the weirdness here. These platforms you spawn on, they don't spawn in at the same time. 
Port 1 spawns in slightly earlier than Port 2, Dude. 2 slightly earlier than 3, and so on. This means on Yoshi's Story, where Port 3 spawns above Port 4, at an appropriate height above the platform, you can drop through the platform with an aerial before <laughs> your opponent in Port 4 can Get really react. A pretty goofy thing you can do with this knowledge is set the stock count to 1, and with one of the higher ports, kill yourself before the clock even starts counting down. <laughs> but we haven't even touched on the weirdest part of the port discrepancies yet. Remember this guy? It's pretty good. Well, his down B is a move called Cyclone. Right. And it can be... Ch Dude, this editing is so cool. Charged or uncharged. I love his editing. When it's charged, Luigi can mash B to gain height with it. And when it's not charged, he can't. Right, I As did you know might that. have guessed, using down B when it's charged uses that charge uh -huh. and requires him to charge it again. Right. Accomplished by simply down completing on the, the move stage. on the ground. Yeah. Now, when Luigi spawns into a match, what do you think it's defaulted to? Random. Charged or uncharged? All right, you got me. It depends on port. Okay, yeah. yeah. And the character he's fighting. What? And the skin both of you are using. And the stage. I was extra right. That's actually random. That's ultra random. That's the most random thing you could have. Ready? What the fuck? I don't like the phrase skin difference. I don't like that. Skin diff. What the fuck? Couldn't you pick a color alt? Say alt difference. I don't like that. Character diff. That's crazy. Sakurai goofing with this one. <laughs> We actually know why this happens. Do we? Deep in the uncharted, disastrous pit of Melee's code, there's a variable for Luigi's Cyclone Charge. Uh -huh. Now, when Luigi begins a match, instead of it being set to say zero for uncharged and one for charged, it's set to nothing, resulting <laughs> in it just being set to random crap at the beginning of every game, <laughs> which the game interprets as charged or uncharged L luigi is so fucking weird bro why is luigi like this in every game this character's goofy i hate luigi bro what a character big thanks bro. to brog dizzy dubs rewatcher big fan of this channel Every time they upload a new thing, I just get it all over my recommended. What's their most popular video? Oh, I've never seen this one. The Game & Watch one? It's only five minutes. There's a new Channel 5? Oh, never mind. I got Channel 5 mixed up with the, the horror one. Channel 34? Is that it? Never mind. Never mind. Let me see the, the game and watch one. Hello, gentlemen. I've never seen it. And mom. Do you know who the most broken character in Melee is? Who? What? No, not him. No, not him either. No, not... <gasps> it's not a high tier, okay? It's this guy. This guy. I've actually always heard that Game & Watch is, like, unfinished, but I've never known why. Currently, Mr. Game & Watch sits at the top of F tier, oh. higher than seven other characters. He sucks! Which in itself is a bit surprising given his very special characteristics, such as being the only character not able to L cancel all of his aerials, having the worst shield in the game. That's his default shield? <laughs> Surely somebody hit him. Somebody had to have hit him. Actually, this is fake. WarioWare isn't in melee. Checkmate. Dumbass. You thought I wouldn't notice? So easy. I'm so glad I watched that Karyos video. I'm so glad I watched that.
I can always detect a fake game and watch. Being tied for second lightest character along with Jigglypuff. Wait, second lightest? Who's lightest? Pichu? Pichu's lighter than Jigglypuff in Melee? Huh. I mean, I knew that was true in Ultimate, but... Having a very huh. linear, albeit long, recovery. Damn, that recovery go far crazy. The worst spot dodge in the game. On the flip side, however, Mr. Game & Watch boasts fantastic disjointed moves like forward and down smash, along with its forward and neutral air, which is the strongest neutral air in the game. Solid follow-ups off of grabs. Strongest neutral air in the game. God damn! Echo, Captain Falcon and Pikachu. No shortage of kill moves, and of course, his X factor in the form of. Bro, this shit gives me motion chain sickness. Grab on Fox. This down throw for every click has a screen rumble. Falco, Captain Falcon, uh -oh. and Pikachu. Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> no shortage of kill moves. I'm gonna throw and of up. His X factor in the form. I need Dramamine to fight Game and Watch. Mr. Game and Watch is I hate screen that. rumble, bro. While he's a completely unfinished, broken disaster, he's also not horrible, and he's even tournament viable. In 2019 alone, character specialist Curb has gotten wins on multiple members of the top 100, namely Ryan Ford, Two Saint, HT, oh, don't call 40 Second, Cobb, and Vortex. And in years prior, That's he's beaten it. players like the P, 40 Second, Cobb, and Vortex. I want a quesadilla so bad. It's not even a quesadilla, but it looked like a split quesadilla, and I got so hungry. Yeah, I'm hungry. I'm very hungry. Fuck, man. Look at that. That looks tasty. And in years prior, he's beaten players like the Moon, Duck, and Slox. Oh! I nutted. He even took a game from Hungry Box in a money match. So what makes him the most broken character in Melee? Hey, that's mine! That's mine. First, that's copyrighted. Let's go back to what I said about Mr. Game & Watch being the only character in Melee unable to L-cancel all of his aerials. There's a reason for this. Because of an oversight by the developers, the game actually sees his back neutral Sue him. I will. and up aerials as special attacks. Yeah, the moves you do with the B button. What? And of course, because you can't L cancel special moves, you can't L cancel those three moves either. Why? So if you really think about it, Mr. Game & Watch actually only has two aerials, <laughs> forward and down aerial, and seven special moves. Bro, he's mad special. Good for him. His three extra special moves. Special are just little guy. Onto the C stick and A button. Wrap He's my special that little guy. His spot dodge is dog shit. When you spot my dodge, my very melee, special the little boy. The amount of frames you're intangible or unable to get hit or grabbed, and the amount of frames you're vulnerable after performing a spot dodge varies from character to character. One thing that stays consistent with every character's spot dodge, however, is that they all are intangible longer than they're vulnerable. Sure. With some even having twice as many intangible frames as vulnerable frames. I mean, it would be a little strange if a movement to dodge attacks <laughs> made you more vulnerable than not. When no it, way. Get this. Not only Thanks does Elvis for the prime. Thank you, the Shippu. least amount of intangibility frames, 11. On top of that, he's vulnerable for 20 frames, nearly twice as long as he is intangible. You're hearing that right. Mr. Game & Watch's spot dodge leaves him more susceptible to getting hit than it does help him avoid attacks. Just shield, bro. You just got a shield. You just got a shield, that's all. Just shield instead, bro. Yeah. You can this shield. This is Mr. Game & Watch's full shield. Yeah, see? Look! Look! <laughs> bro, what do you mean? Tilt your shield. Pussy. Sounds like a skill issue. Tilt that shit. You don't know how to tilt shields? Come on, dude. Just light shield. True. See? Change the game. Look at how little it covers. His head, his nose, his hands, Adapt. and his feet are all exposed. It doesn't Before work. Mr. Game & Watch has to light shield to have it be comparable to other shields. Good shield, see? Which makes him get pushed back farther than if you were hard shielding and be stuck in shield stun for longer. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that about light shielding. <laughs> Whoops. According to the wiki, Mr. Game & Watch's pathetic shield is the result of a coding error. <laughs> the developers just... What a shitty game. It, I guess. Bad the game. updated PAL version of the game that was released six months after it was released in Japan. Look at this character. Look him in his eyes. He's very cute. Does he deserve all this? Strangely, Mr. Game & Watch shares the same fast. Get yourself a big old case of dear champ. Oh my smile. god, thank you, Garfield Fart, for the ten dollars.
speed, falling speed, walking speed, traction, and gravity is Mario. This job's not worth it sometimes, man. Leading much of the community to speculate that his attributes were copied over from Mario's and then left unchanged due to time restraints. It's not that far. I'll gift five if you get a sandwich instead. What time is it, bro? It's 11. Can I even order anything? Fetched, considering Finally, he can afford a quesadilla. Clearly unfinished Thank God. The already, Thank you, Garfield. The fact that the game was developed in only 13 months. One of the in-game trophies for Mr. Game & Watch reads, His image is known far and wide and respected by gamers everywhere. Copium. This was not true. I didn't know who this motherfucker was. And I'm old. I was 13, I think, when Melee came out. Because I was born in 88. Uh, Melee came out in 2001. I was 13 years old. This motherfucker was a uh, who? Well, if that were true, why didn't you respect him, Sakurai? Why is this character such a mess? Why is this character so broken? Oh, where'd he go? Good movie. The worst character in Melee. Is it Bowser? I thought it was Kirby. It's not Kirby? By far? By far? What happened to the logic story? Oh, yeah! Hold on. <laughs> okay. I'm so glad this is still on the internet. So you can hear me talking. You can hear me comment. It. It's me right there. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Fifty p coney. Where's my body? I don't have a neck. I'm like this. I look like a fucking snowman. These two posture check. That before a long. Oh, I'm I'm leaning back, bro. I'm mad relaxed. I'm chilling. That's what this is. I'm chilling, bro. Look at that. All right, so I think that's Alpha Zealot on my side. Alpha Zealot is actually the current owner of Smashboards. Um, he's a cool guy. I think this is Alpha Zealot. I still have my Arcade Legacy shirt, by the way, from this tournament. I think I don't know. Coney, do you think you could live the up smash? No, no, he's 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 copium miming. So this is a big set. Judo is a chic player from the Midwest. I think Kentucky. Uh, or Kansas, one of those two. He's from the Midwest, the Heartland, right? Uh, Sheik is not good in Brawl. Sheik is not good at all. She has some nightmare matchups against certain characters, like Fox, where she just dumps on him, and like Ganondorf, but who gives a shit? Thank you, Pandeceptions, for the Prime. Uh, but she's awful. She's not good. But Judo is a Sheik player from the Midwest that, you know, has taken some names. He doesn't place great. But he does pretty well. He's up against Logic. I didn't even realize his name was Logic here. I thought it was still Pyronic Star. When did this come out? 2011. Jesus, he's been Logic for 10 years. And I still call him PS. Insane. Uh, so, this was 10 years ago. Um, who doesn't dump on Ganon and Brawl? Wario. Not a joke. Wario is top 10 in the game. Yeah. Why? I'll tell you in a second. That game's weird. Um, but no, so Logic and Judo are playing. Logic is one of the best in MDVA. Uh, top three, probably, in MDVA. Judo is this up-and-coming chic player, has a lot of people excited because they don't know the character, whatever. How fat was I here? I feel like I was fatter during Brawl. But I can't tell because I'm in 20p. Whatever. So, <laughs> little fat ass kid. Shut up! I was older than so many other people here. <laughs> okay. What's MDVA? I'm not from US. Uh, Maryland, Virginia. It's two states right next to each other. So, uh, oh yeah, this stage was legal, by the way. <laughs> Unfrozen PS2. Yep. Amazing. Yeah. I think there's a point where the wind thing comes up and everybody goes, woo. <laughs> Very funny. Anyway, uh, Judo and Logic play. And this is how the set ends. Okay? 
So if he catches Logic with the needle, I think he can follow up with Dak. Logic is very scared. Oh my god, dude! This game was insane! Watch this, you, bro! Watch this. It's so. This will kill, by the way. Up Smash will kill here. Logic with the needle. I think you. I love this fucking game, bro. I love this game. I love Brawl, bro. I love Brawl. Logic dies to the up B up smash. Now, you may have noticed there was a pause in the middle of this combo. Who did the pause? Hmm. Uh-oh. Player 2 detected. Interesting. Who's player 2? Uh-oh. That means Judo paused. Now, to his credit, Judo did admit to pausing. He was like, yeah, I paused. I think I hit the button. I was just so excited. Whatever. In tournament, this creates a weird thing. Because when you pause, you're supposed to give up a stock, if not the whole game. It used to be a whole game. Now it's a stock. Logic is... Trying to fight back and forth. He doesn't know whether he should take the game or not. Obviously, like, as a competitor, he wants to take it. Because, like, you know, he doesn't want to... He doesn't want to give up a free game. Uh, but he clearly lost here. He was going to die anyways. Au contraire, according to Logic himself, he swears he could have SDI'd this. Now, there is no world... Where you SDI this move. There is no world where not only do you SDI this move, but you live this move at 121. There is no planet where you survive this move. 103 is when you get hit. Olimar is light. But he swears in his heart of hearts that he could have SDI'd this. Now, to his credit, Logic didn't want to just take the game win. What he did was he said, and, and there's like a long period here. This actually was way longer. Did they cut it? So here we're talking about it. This was like a 20-minute talk. And then I, I have to break the news because, you know, I'm the anchor of Brawl. Uh, I have to break the news. Logic has agreed to a, a replay of the game. And he, uh, he beat the shit out of him. <laughs> he beat the shit out of him. Yeah. You know what sucks? The craziest part about this story? Do you know who had to play winner? She still in? Yeah, no. Tony's gonna be I wanted to fight that Sheik so fucking bad. I wanted to fight that Sheik so fucking bad, I was going to shit on Judo. I was going to dumpster Judo, bro. Judo was going to get railed. She cannot kill DDD, ever. Instead, I gotta edge. fight this fucking Olimar. And then hit him with a back air. But Logic really spot on. So stupid. Him. Right, you know, Kyle, I think you're absolutely right. The biggest advantage in Cody's case... Dumb. Look at this! Air edge guarding. And Olimar's options with recoveries are not very good. Yeah. The Whatever. whistle, it helps. Well, but it's not great. Jump, but... I think it went game three, right? <laughs> Copium. I can't tell. <laughs> the fucking setup. How long is this? Okay, game three. It went game three. Which one did I win? Did I save the replay? <laughs> How did I kill him? It had to have been funny. We're gonna watch the game I won. Hold on. What stage is this? It's Smashville. It's just a. Uh, it's a. It's a texture change. Probably up tilt. 
We're going up tilt on this. Yeah, it's up we've tilt. We've had nothing but men and I ban tournaments around here. Here we go. Yeah. Ooh. Tony, you just have to support Tony him. Once you realize this. people go to him, Hold on. nationals realize it's a good idea too. I think we're going to see him take it too. Oh! Beautiful edge guard. Good. Beautiful edge guard. How does he do it, bro? Oh, caught his ass. You thought I wouldn't go down there? You fucking schmuck. Good idea too. Watch his fast fall. This motherfucker plummets. Goosh. Right <laughs> Beautiful edge guard. No stage Good spike. Good stuff. No text, baby. Save that. Save it. Save it. That shit's on the SD card. That shit's going what? on the internet, baby. <laughs> that shit's going online. Uh, I don't remember what happened the third game. I don't care. Let's go watch more awesome sauce. Anyway, that set pissed me off. <laughs> All right. Is Bowser really that bad? The SD card is long gone. That's so sad, dude. Lost media. Coney winning the one game. Why does Wario lose to Ganon? Oh, shit. Yeah, you're right. Hold on. I'll show you. Uh, who's a good Wario and a good Ganon player from Brawl? Uh, DLA versus... Oh, God. What was the Wario play? Chris did as. They were both Midwest. DLA was like the best... Uh... No? Who is the other one? LOE one? LOE one stands for Luigi owns everyone one. He played Wario. Ganon Gauntlet. Oh, here we go. So the Ganon Gauntlet was something that happened at all the apexes where you would have to beat ten Ganons in a row. And you had like I think you had like twenty stocks and you had to beat a bunch of Ganons. Oh, hold on. Let me fix the audio. So you guys don't get sick. One sec. Okay. It'll suck for me, but... There you go. Should be fixed now. This is why this matchup is bad. Now it's bad on both sides. As you can see. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, maybe LOE1 wins this. Uh-oh, no, it's free to 56. Okay. Wait. Wow, Cody, Ganon really sucks. True. Wait, maybe LOE1 wins. Ooh, big trip. Wario Brawl is so cool. Brawl Wario is so cool, dude. <laughs> okay. Not what I thought was going to happen. That's not why he wins the matchup, but that is very funny. That is very funny. It's not that. That was not what I thought would happen. Oh, God. Hold on. Who's another Wario? Verm Anubis versus Wario, I guess. I don't know. I need Brawl. How do I find this information? Fuck. LOE 1 is still ranked in Michigan and all. Damn. Wario Ganondorf Brawl. I guess. This is... No, these are casuals, casuals, ca casuals. Japan! How did Wario die first stock? Oh, he didn't. Uh, uh... Okay, this does not prove my point. This does not prove my point at all. Hunger! Hunger was a Wario player. Okay, hold on. Okay, maybe this... Maybe I was wrong about this matchup. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. 
He's gonna grab him. Okay. Anyway, War Ganondorf could 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 F smash Wario. <laughs> he could grab release forward sp I'm gonna find it. Now I'm just mad. Wait, this is it. This has to be it. No. God damn it, come on. Now I'm just... Grab him. Here! That's free! That's guaranteed! That's guaranteed! And it'll kill at, like, 80. You could also up smash. You could also up smash if you want. If you want to kill him off the top. Can't Yoshi infinite Wario? Yes. Wario had a lot of problems in this game. Okay, let's find out about Browser. I lost so many viewers getting stun-locked by fucking Ganondorf <laughs> Wario. Ugh. Oh. Of 1999, just five. I just had to see it. I had to see it. Five months after Smash 64 was released, Masahiro Sakurai posted the results of a poll on Nintendo's official website asking readers for their suggestions on potential characters for Smash 2. It was a small poll, nothing like today where you have millions of people hoping for characters from their childhoods to get in, like Crash Bandicoot or Sora, just for another Fire Emblem character to be added. So joining Smash. Consumes even the darkness itself. Back then, Super Smash Bros. was a tiny series, and only about 4% of the world's population had access to the internet. Damn! Now, back then, most characters Wait, of the really? population had access to the internet. I was one of them. Oh my god, I never realized that I was like, oh my god, dude! Information source, I don't care. <laughs> Dude, no, I had the internet in 1996, or 7, I think. I was 1% or 2%. That's fucking insane. Wow. I wasn't even rich. I just had a single mom who worked in tech. That's no, crazy. Back then, most characters' votes didn't even reach the triple digits. A lot of the characters... Gooey? DDD, GUI, Mennonite, someone from Kirby, please. In this poll, were actually added to later installments, which is pretty cool. Wario, Ganondorf, Mewtwo, Meta Knight, Diddy Kong, and Sonic, just to name a few. Check this out. Someone from Fire Emblem at 12th place with 18 votes. Yuck. Guess Sakurai really delivered on that one. Even 20 years ago, Banjo and Kazooie were one of the most requested characters. Ah! James Bond. <laughs> James Bond got more votes than Banjo and Kazooie. I I sometimes think about that. Like, what if James Bond... Because James Bond was supposed to be in Melee. Like, if he was in Melee, that means he'd be an Ultimate. What would that have been like? That would be so cool. God. He'd probably just be Snake. Canopio? I don't know who that is. Is that Gino? Or is that Toad? Kino I thought it was a K. Canopio is with a K. Damn, bro. Everybody wants Toad. We never even got him. So stupid. Baby Mario? Who the hell wanted to play as Baby Mario? Bro, Gino only got five votes. Cringe. But who got the most votes? Who won the poll? Well, it was the only character to receive more than 100 votes. And he won by a landslide, with over twice as many votes as Princess Peach, Damn. who finished in second place. Damn! It was none other than King Koopa himself. Hooray! Bowser, with a whopping 169 votes. And Sakurai Damn. listened, because two years later, Bowser saw his debut in Super Smash Bros. Melee. And he was terrible. Now fast forward to the present day. Smash 2 has been out for almost two decades. Armada releases its final tier list, calling Bowser the absolute worst character <laughs> in the game, Aww. a sentiment shared by Rishi, who places him in the can't tier. 
and at the very bottom of a community voted tier list made in 2019. Well, hold on. Rishi is known for shit posting. He might have been being ironic. We can't take that at face value. It's King Koopa himself. He might have been joking. Bowser. This character sucks ass. Ooh. To start things off, Bowser's just slow. Take jump True. squat, for instance, the amount of frames before you leave the ground when you input a jump. Of the 26 playable characters in Melee, seven have a three frame jump squat, eight have a four frame jump squat, seven have five frames, three have six frames, and one, one Aww. character has eight frames of jump squat. Bro, Jigglypuff has a five frame jump squat? That sucks. Huh? Bowser. Yeah, they Damn, really dude. skipped seven to make Bowser even worse. This slow startup on jumping, in addition to she his laggy stay aerials, in the air, make yeah. it incredibly difficult for Bowser to approach. Instead, Bowser relies heavily on intercepting bad approaches with his fair, not unlike Ganondorf, and counter hits out of shield with one of his only good moves, grounded up B. But even he's, this he's move, had that while move a solid for every kill game move now. on floatier characters, and fast due to only having a five frame start, has that move leaves forever Bowser now. vulnerable if it misses. Insane. And it's hard to combo off of due to its duration. Speaking of I which, love the noise comboing on it. with Bowser is a nightmare. <laughs> In combination with his jump squat, most of his aerials are either <laughs> too slow air. or too strong to string together with other moves. And his low speed in the air prevents him from chasing opponents wrong to string. Bro, how far did he think this role was going? Thank you, Herman, for the gift. String together with Bro. <laughs> he throws out a grab here. Fox would have had to roll twice. What the heck? He expected illusion through, and he didn't get hit by it. If Fox rolls here, he doesn't go through him, right? What the fuck? Oh, my God. With other moves. And his low speed in the air prevents him from chasing opponents that are above him for follow-ups. Ah, he dropped the it's ledge. It's rare to see Bowser players use their smash attacks. Forward and up smash, while extremely strong, are pitifully slow on startup and laggy when they end, well, he's leaving Bowser, Bowser wide open to getting hit. <laughs> Down smash you, is dietitian. a little better in that it's actually I decently prime, fast, right? but like his other two smash attacks, is massively punishable if it misses. Poor Bowser, bro. Bowser's size is a huge problem. He's easily walled out and hit out of Sounds the like air. Sounds like his doctor. And in combination with his falling speed, his massive model makes him combo food for most of the cast. But Bowser's big, so at least he'll have some reach. Bro, he's living forever, though. He lived to 160. Right? This is Bowser's grab. That little pink thing, that's his grab range. It's pathetic. They didn't even make it go to the tips of his fingers. And his running grab is even worse. What, oh, I forgot his about biceps? his running grab. Why the hell is the hitbox not even close to the end hey, of his flash arms? Beat. Here's Marth's grab for comparison. Bowser's you, recovery is awful. His up special is predictable. He's and Bowser so gains very little height when he uses it. Meaning if you're under the stage, it's very unlikely you'll make it back. This gives Bowser two options when recovering. Recover high and get hit, or recover to ledge and pray your opponent messes up. That's it. <laughs> so is there anything good about Bowser? Well, like I said before, his up be out of shield is a solid get off me move. Cool. But he can also use it to quickly grab ledge, which is useful for edge guarding and getting away from your opponent for a bit. Okay. Bowser's up tilt can actually lead into other moves and his forward aerial is strong and fast. Yeah. Ooh, nice there. Cover yeah. that. Wait, what's his neutral air? Bill is strong and fast. What the fuck is Bowser's neutral air? What is he doing? Is just a spin? Yeah. Ooh, nice there. Other moves and his forward I can't tell where the move is. I can't tell where the move is. He's just in his shell. Yeah. Ooh, nice. It's Brawl's neutral air? What's I don't remember Bowser in Brawl. I remember him hopping everywhere. Bowser was a rabbit in Brawl because he used side B and he could keep jumping. It was very funny. There. Cover yeah, that. Yeah, and it's a pretty sad move to be called good, but his attack from ledge is one of the best in the game. Oh, that's pretty good. 
With a cast of 26 characters, at least half of them can and have made top 8 at majors, multiple times in fact. And even more beyond those 13 can make massive upsets over great players. <laughs> Not fucking oh Wrangler. <laughs> but some of them, like Bowser, you, might Bros. just be destined to obscurity forever, drowning in pools at big tournaments, but perfectly capable of winning locals in the right hands. Poor Bowser, Even bro. if your character sucks ass, don't let that stop you from having fun. So, DJ Nintendo takes grand finals. I didn't realize it was that bad. A DK made a big upset at main stage, I forget which. It was Ringler. It's always Ringler. I'm positive it was Ringler. It has to be Ringler. Luigi is weird. True, I hate this motherfucker. More Luigi hate. I hate this guy. This is Luigi. What's Luigi's Boo. last name? Mario. This is Mario. What's Mario's full name? Well, Mario Mario, of course. According to the 1993 live-action Super Mario Brothers movie, that is. Name. Mario. Last name. Mario. Okay, what's your name? Luigi. Luigi Luigi? No, Luigi Mario. Okay, look, how many Mario are there between the... This is a funny movie, by the way. I would, I would, I would like to watch it on stream. Maybe one day. I guess it makes sense. They are the Mario Brothers, after all. Maybe one day. In Melee, the Mario Brothers share a very special it's a good attack. movie, bro. Their downward angled forward tilt, or just we tried daft, once. For sure. Yeah. Here's what Luigi's daft looks like. <laughs> at nine hundred and ninety-nine percent. It kills. The Mario Brothers daft has a set knockback Close. of one. Set knockback means that the move's knockback doesn't scale at all with percent, like moves typically do in Smash games. It's always just... one. Now, attacks with set knockback aren't actually that uncommon. Fox's Shine and Yoshi's Down Tilt both have set knockback, for example, and both are great moves. The difference, however, is that Fox's Shine has a set knockback of 80, and Yoshi's Down Tilt has a set knockback of 100. Multi-hit moves like Falcon's Neutral Air were given an initial hit with very low set knockback. Are we sure so that, it can that Luigi's combo finished? Into its second hit. But Mario and Luigi's daft. This is it. This is the entire move. Bro, Mewtwo looks like a Funko Pop. Melee Mewtwo doesn't look normal. You don't think so? Is he saluting Satan? <laughs> He's not even doing the pose. Doesn't he look goofy, though? No, his body's, like, scrunched, right? He's taller in the other games. You know? He doesn't look fine. No, he doesn't. He has a giant head. He looks weird as shit. He looks like a caricature. Hold on. Does this not look weird to you? This is what he looks like now. He's like svelte and thin. Do you see what I mean? And long. Do you see this? He looks cartoonish. You know? He's like a toy. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. He looks like an old sprite. Yeah, that's a better way to put it. He looks like a like he came out of the page. Like out of the Game Boy, you know? I guess they didn't have much detail to go off of. It's combination of literally one knockback, low hit stun, and 24 frames of ending lag make it one Luigi, of the worst bro. moves in the game. And this isn't some mistake or bug, by the way. This is 100% intentional. It's meant to be like this. Because not only is Dr. Mario's daft completely normal, but Luigi's daft is still like this in Brawl, while Mario's was changed. Wait, Meaning what? saw both of their dafts during Brawl's development and decided, yeah, this is what Luigi should look like. I did not know that. Well, maybe Game Watch is just heavy, bro. I don't know. 
<laughs> Who knows? Do you want to get like really high? <laughs> Check this out. Using a band exploit called the Luigi Ladder. Hell yeah! Can go infinitely high using their. I love the Luigi. This was the funniest shit when I was a kid. This was so fucking funny to me, bro. I thought this was hilarious. Thank you, Ichiba. Ichibas. It's a hard name to say. Thank you for the prime. This exploit works because the I weak that was mad of cool, Luigi's dude. upbeat caused no hit stun or knockback. Tightest shit I've so ever seen. So when one Luigi hits the other with a weak upbeat, it interrupts their free fall and allows the Luigi that got hit to use their upbeat in return. <laughs> the two Luigis then just have to keep interrupting you the other's free forever. fall back and forth with their weak upbeats to continue their ascent. Amazing. The complete lack of hit stun and knockback is also why the two Luigis don't get killed when they reach the upper blast zone, as characters can only be KO'd off the top if they're being affected by one or both. Oh, why I didn't is it know banned, that. you ask? Well, in doubles, it can become an unbeatable stalling. Hell point. yeah, it can! A team of two Luigis oh, hell yeah! For percent lead, they can perform <laughs> the exploit to ascend far beyond where their opponents could reach them. What's this? Stay there until the timer runs out. Thereby winning by means of a timeout. Was it this in, in Ultimate? This was in something. I think this was in Ultimate. Not 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 the Luigi letter. No, 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 no. There is something like this in Ultimate. Pac-Man up B. That was it. That was so fucking funny. I think it was 4. I think it was Smash 4. Oh, dude, Smash 4 Pac-Man would do the same thing. And you would time people out with double Pac-Man. It was very funny. I forgot about that. That was good. That was good. But Pitt could snipe them. He could. Yes. You probably already know that Luigi's wave dash is crazy long. His taunt is the only one in the game to have a hitbox attached to it. And that he's affected by the invisible ceiling glitch a disproportionate amount compared to every other character. Check out my video on that if you want. He's so you goofy. You also might know that his dash attack is shit. But did you know that it's especially bad because it's missing its final hitbox? Well, Here's he's what it tired. Looks like in Brawl. Every he's hit tired before then. the last is wimpy with set knockback. It makes sense. These first hits just serve to rack on damage, but the last hit actually knocks your opponent away. Yeah. But in Melee, the strong final slap Sakurai hates Luigi. isn't there. Who doesn't? Which means all Luigi has are the wimpy hits. It's worth noting that unlike Brawl, these wimpy hits don't have set knockback, so they actually send your opponent further as their percent Holy increases. Shit. But even at 100 plus percent, its knockback is just embarrassing. Maybe well, the just developers killed Jigglypuff, intended so. to have a strong hit in this move, but they messed up the hitboxes somewhere along the way. It's a big ass Maybe FD. they even just forgot to add it at all. And if that's the case, then bravo, Hal. Bravo. You know what's crazy? I remember when they made Luigi Dash Attack good. Because, like, here it works in Brawl, but it's bad. But I remember in Smash 4, it was actually, like, a good move. Which is so annoying. It kills an ultimate. It's really weird when they take, like, joke moves and then they make them decent or good. You know what I mean? Or, like, when they, for instance, turn Raptor Boost into a combo move and then into a move that doesn't work and then it's a kill move and then it's back to a combo move. <laughs> Why did they do that? Why did they do that? Like, Rob Side B. Oh, my God, yeah. These are the equivalent of trying to catch Dude, bar yeah. of wet soap. Dude, I forgot about Rob Psy B, which was always a joke. Rob Psy B was a meme, and then they were like, Oh, yeah? <laughs> Thank you, Shybone. Same with Nikita. Brawl Nikita was awful. I remember my first time seeing Nikita in Ultimate, because I was playing with somebody, and they did Nikita, and I laughed, and then I died at, like, 80. And I was like, what the fuck? Oh, my God. Now who's laughing? There is a chance, Silly. however, that this is how it's supposed to be. Missing hitbox and all. I mean, these are the same developers who made this move on purpose. Whatever the case is, thanks for watching. Good movie. I'm not gonna steal any more of this guy's movies. Guys, subscribe to Awesome Sauce. I don't subscribe, 
because I see all of his shit anyway. <laughs> he he hits the algo. When he uploads, it comes up. So I didn't realize that I wasn't subbed. But now I'll fix it. All right, one more movie tonight, and it's a bonus movie. Every once in a while, a movie comes along that I want to watch, but it doesn't really fit in with the other stuff that I'm doing. And I don't really know where this one would go. Welcome to bonus movie. <laughs> do, 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 do. These are the top 20 most ridiculous lawsuits ever. <laughs> I have to know. <laughs> How ridiculous are they? I have to know. Pearson's argument against the dry cleaner defied Ever? logic. Ever? Welcome to Watch Mojo. Ever? And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 ridiculous lawsuits. I, I have to a know. Bit. Uh, One of them has to be the McDonald's coffee, right? One of them has to be the McDonald's coffee. Thank you, 4C Joe. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, I went to the shrink before I go to court. For this list, we're looking at the most outrageous. McDonald's coffee was legit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't get me wrong. It was real. She, listen, I know, but I'm saying, I don't know how Watch Mojo feels about it, you know? Just an unbelievable lawsuit. I know it was justified. Yeah, I know the Which story. Which of these do you okay? think is the most ridiculous? Come on. Let us know in the comments below. Number 20, Appendage in the Chili. What? You all know the story. Back in 2005, Anna Ayala allegedly found a severed fingertip in her bowl of Wendy's chili. Ah! The woman who says she found a finger in her bowl of chili at a Wendy's in San Jose, California. It became the media story of the decade, and it <laughs> understandably fuck? resulted in a slew of bad publicity against the fast food giant. That's when we find that there's something that looks like a nail. When Ayala sued the restaurant, the public oh! watched with bated breath, probably while eating McDonald's or some other competitor. Of course, it was all nonsense. Ayala had gotten the fingertip from an associate of her husband, who had lost it in a workplace accident. She then placed it in her chili in order to oh. scam Wendy's. She subsequently pleaded guilty to grand larceny and served four years in prison. Later, it turned out she had planted the finger herself. She went to prison for four years. Number 19. Uh, actually, I, I did something similar. Okay, not similar. <laughs> Let me walk that back a bit. I have a story. Uh, I forget what fast food place it was. There's a fast food place where just to fuck with their social media guy, I did a thing where I took the drink. I ate fast food in my car, and then I finished the drink, and I put a soda can in the cup and put the straw in the soda can. And I tweeted at them like, yo, what the fuck are your employees doing? I forget, and I'm trying to find out who it was. It was very funny. I think I got him in trouble. Uh, it's not Popeyes, because that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking for it now. This could be used in court. Statute of limitations. This was at least five years ago. What was it? Uh, oh God, what was it? It was, it's not Popeyes. Fuck, Canes? No, it wasn't. Taco Bell. It wasn't Wendy's. It might have been KFC. No. Fuck. I don't remember. Not churches. It was near my house. So it had to have been... Maybe it was Taco Bell? Wait. No, no, fuck, maybe it's Burger King, no, Burger King, what's around there, Wendy's? Fuck, I'm getting stun locked. I know. Whatever. Maybe I deleted it because I felt bad. All right, we're going to stop. Arby's. That does sound like an Arby's thing to do. Yes, I found it. It was Arby's. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. 2015, in my car. <laughs> 
Well, Arby's, y'all really thought I wouldn't notice. Y'all thought I wouldn't notice? That's crazy. That's crazy you thought I wouldn't notice that you put a Coke can in the cup. That's crazy. We're sorry to hear this. What Arby's restaurant was this for? Just jokes. Thanks for caring. <laughs> they actually replied. They actually did reply. They actually did reply. I don't know. I, maybe they deleted it. But the reply was just uh, this emoji. Hold on. <laughs> they did reply with this. <laughs> they liked my tweet. They were like, uh, thanks. <laughs> they were annoyed. They were very annoyed. Yeah. Yeah, I felt kind of bad. In Uber ruined... I worked at social media. Shit like this gives us heart attacks. Yeah, I thought it was pretty funny, though. It's a funny bit. It's a funny bit. Modern technology. Thank you, whoever An said Arby's. Frenchman That's what it was. sued Uber in 2017, claiming that the app had caused his divorce. As the story goes, the man had once ordered an Uber using his wife's iPhone. However, a bug in the app prevented the session from closing properly. <laughs> his wife then received notifications of all his future Uber rides, and both the locations and times aroused her suspicion. She then issued Whoa. a divorce, believing that her husband was cheating. The man, in turn, Wait. blamed Uber for his failed marriage and sued <laughs> the company for nearly $50 million. Did he win? Unfortunately, the outcome of the lawsuit is currently unknown. No! Man, they're always trying to get you. Corporate America always screwing you. That's crazy. Number 18, my iced coffee doesn't measure up. Alexander Farzesh had an interesting accusation. According to him, Starbucks was guilty of both false advertising and breach of warranty by using wow. less liquid in their drinks than advertised. Okay. For example, a 12 ounce iced coffee doesn't actually contain 12 ounces of coffee, owing to the inclusion of There's the ice. ice. The case was almost immediately thrown out by the court, meaning <laughs> that it fell under, quote, reasonable consumer standards. I guess. In other words, those purchasing an iced coffee would understand that the inclusion of ice would decrease the amount of liquid. Sure. Add your ice and enjoy it quickly before all the ice melts. Or, as Judge Percy Anderson hilariously summarized, quote, As young children learn, they can increase the amount of beverage they receive if they order no ice. It'll melt a little bit and dilute the coffee. Then it's not iced strength. coffee, you smug-ass judge. What an asshole. That's just coffee. Number 17, the movie texter. <laughs> there are dates from hell, and then there's this. Brandon Vesmar and an unnamed woman went to see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and the woman began texting her upset friend who was having a fight with her boyfriend. Okay. Listen, your texting is, is driving me a little nuts. And she said, um, well, I can't not text my friend. The incensed Vesmar asked her Good to friend. take it outside, so she did, and then never returned. He then sued his date for the price of the ticket, $17.31, <laughs> with his lawsuit petition claiming that, quote, the defendant's behavior was a threat to civilized society. Here's the paperwork Brandon just filed in small claims court demanding $17.31. Bro, now more than ever, I need the Sigma theme on my stream deck. Now more than ever. In turn, the woman claimed she needed to remove herself from the situation Amazing. for her own safety. She also planned to file a restraining order against Vesmar. He got paid out, he though. He contacted her younger sister, he got paid demanding out. his money. It's settled, man. Time to withdraw this court case. Absolutely. It's settled. Number 16, the Pepsi Pay Point out. case. In the late 90s, Pepsi launched a points-based rewards program. Basically, buyers would accumulate points by purchasing Pepsi products okay. and, in turn, could spend the points on merchandise. The accompanying commercial saw a teenager getting into a Harrier jet accompanied by the words, <laughs> Harrier Fighter, 7 million Pepsi points. Oh, no. I already know where this is going. I already know where this is going. 
on an unrelated note, I probably should take move into Coney's house out of the Coney coins <laughs> rewards. <laughs> now, the more Pepsi you drink, the more great stuff you're going How much to get. Pepsi would you have to drink? As per contest rules, people could also pay 10 cents per point. So, John Leonard sent a check for $700,000, thinking he had just scored an incredible discount on a 30 plus million dollar jet. Leonard got the $700,000 from five well off investors. What? Sent fuck? Pepsi 15 labels and a check and waited for his jet. Yet Pepsi didn't give him one, so Leonard sued. Pepsi claimed yeah. that it was a joke, and the court agreed, stating that the commercial was, quote, clearly not serious. It was deemed I mean, an illegitimate offer made in jest, and Leonard's I, case was dismissed. In case anyone I else mean, is thinking of ordering a jet, Pepsi has now raised the number of points needed. <laughs> to 8 million. Wait, does that mean oh, there was a Simpsons episode on this? Well, not really, but with the elephant where Bart could have gotten, I think, $5,000 or an elephant. And he took the elephant stampy. I wonder if it was based on this. Number 15, I don't know. a crafty prisoner sues himself. When a judge calls something, quote, an innovative approach to civil rights litigation. There's a Simpsons you know episode on good. everything. That's a true. A man named That's Robert true. Lee Brock was spending over 20 I mean, years a good in one. prison for grand larceny when he had a brilliant idea. He would sue himself for a violation of his civil rights and make the state pay for it. Brock drank alcohol and in mm -hmm. turn sued himself for $5 million for violating his religious beliefs. He hilariously requested that the state of Virginia float the bill, arguing that he was a ward of the state and couldn't make money while in prison. Judge Rebecca Beach Smith commended Brock's creativity, but instantly and gave him ten the case, million dollars, calling it quote ludicrous. And they were friends 14, until they were ninety. Where is my job? The job market is tough. Trina Thompson discovered that firsthand. Thompson <laughs> earned her bachelor's in information sue? technology from New York's Monroe Corporations. College. However. Where my job at? Able to find a job between her graduation in April and the following August. As a result, she sued the college, claiming that its career counselors Whoa. were doing a bad job of finding her gainful employment. Thompson believed that graduating from the school was a waste of time and demanded I mean, a refund of her seventy thousand dollar tuition. Okay, well, come on. Unfortunately, that's not how that's college works. Much. And Monroe answered back by stating, "Quote: It is clear that no college can guarantee employment." Number. I don't know, bro. My college had a thing where after you graduated, they, they made some pretty lofty claims about finding you a job. And I did find one, so, uh, you know. I... 13. Empty air. <laughs> Buying snacks can be frustrating. You spend the money, eagerly tear into the packaging, and find a lot of empty air within the box. You then think to yourself, why don't they just fill this space with more candy? Well, then that's it would exactly go bad. what Viola Daniel thought when she sued Tootsie Roll Industries for underpackaging their Junior Mints boxes. That would go bad. She claims the manufacturer right? of Junior Mints intentionally deceived people. According to her lawsuit, Junior Mints contain far more empty space than competing candy brands, and consumers are getting ripped off. According to the 36-page lawsuit, she claims Junior Mints Do any of these people win? Slackville. U.S. District Judge Naomi Reese Buck Buckwald threw the case out on reasonable consumer grounds, hilariously stating that the lawsuit, quote, attributes to consumers a level of stupidity that the court cannot countenance. Whoa. Number 12, come on. a legally binding These verbal judges contract. are mean, bro. Where to even start with this one? While literally fleeing a murder charge, Jesse Dimmick broke into the Kansas home of Jared and Lindsay Rowley and held them captive. The driver was Jesse Dimmick. Jared and Lindsay didn't know Dimmick was a fugitive wanted for murder oh, in Colorado. Geez. He allegedly offered them money in exchange for protection, and they agreed. However, the couple escaped <laughs> once Dimmick fell asleep. And the fugitive was subsequently he fell asleep? arrested. The Rowleys then sued Dimmick for emotional distress, and Dimmick countersued. According to him, the Rowleys had accepted his deal for money and had therefore broken a legally binding oral contract. Not only was Dimmick's lawsuit thrown out, he was also sent to prison for 10 years. If only there were his cell phones back then. If he recorded it, he might have a leg to stand on.
it changed me 100 percent you know the way i look at life the way i take each day number 11 joseph so versus nasa this is a very strange pair of images in january of 2014 astronomers revealed an interesting photo of the martian surface showing a strange rock that had not been present in the same spot 12 days earlier in the uh -huh. court papers joseph suggests that the rock may not be a rock at all but rather a fungus-like organism it naturally brought considerable attention before scientists deduced that it was likely knocked into place by the rover's wheels. The most likely scenario, just uphill. How do you sue this on this? Location, as we were driving on some bedrock, the Opportunity Rover did a, a kind of a pirouette. Undeterred, Californian Ron Joseph filed legal papers. This motherfucker. He looks the type. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I get that vibe. I get the vibe papers, claiming that NASA wasn't doing enough to study what he believed to be a living organism I and a vibe. sign of life on, Mars. Is there life on Mars. Watch Mojo Editor went crazy on that. Did someone say life on Mars? I'm excited about such a prospect too, but this one's just a rock, dude. I do like the way it sounds. David I Bowie like moment. Number 10, what a jackass. Oh, oh shit. I remember these. These did jackass. happen. Born Bob Kraft, this Montana man changed his name to Jack Ass in the late 90s following the death of his brother. Oh, Why? never mind. Wait. To help promote safe and sober driving, of course. This is he different. He began running a nonprofit with the slogan, Be a smart ass, not a dumb ass. But tragic backstory and good intentions aside, his legal case was quite <laughs> ridiculous. Jackass ended up suing Viacom over their famous Jackass brand, <laughs> claiming that the name had plagiarized his own and that the crude franchise was defaming his character. <laughs> to make the story that much more tragic, Jackass took his own life shortly after launching the lawsuit. What the Number nine. Watch Mojo, what the fuck? Why the fuck would you do that? I hate this fucking channel, dude. They showed like 50 clips of Johnny Knoxville being outrageous, being silly, telling a funny story about a name change, and they're just like, oh yeah, he suicided. Number five. Lucas V. McDonald. I can't. Ugh. He says he suffered undue mental. I hate Watch Mojo, bro. They just, they're ruthless. Anguish after he was given only one napkin when he visited the Burger King. Oh, well, the you shame. you all probably heard the story about the woman who sued McDonald's for serving their coffee too hot I did. and for suffering I of third-degree burns. At least that one had legal grounds. We bought a product. It was used as intended. It was unreasonably hot and therefore unreasonably dangerous. And... Those were the essential facts. Nothing trumps Webster Lucas's lawsuit, though, in which he sued McDonald's for $1.5 million after a confrontation stemming from a request for more napkins. Is there a problem? Yes, I need more napkins. You... Bro. Your sleeve. What did you say? Use one of their sleeves. I don't care. Inst How do they do it? How do they, man, they have to have some kind of algorithm where they can type like the phrase, I need more napkins. And then it shows like everything. And they're like, okay, there's a clip from Star Trek. That website on WebSurf. I was thinking that too, but that site is for movies only. But they got mad TV shows. Instead of giving him more napkins, right? the manager allegedly resorted to racist remarks and cursed at Lucas instead, which left the customer distressed, unable to work, and demanding a cool 1.5 million. Hold on, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Use one of theirs. Wait a minute. I don't care. Instead of giving him more napkins, the manager allegedly resorted to racist remarks and cursed at Lucas instead, which left the customer distressed, unable to work, and demanding a cool 1.5 million dollars. I mean, yeah, that's kind of reasonable, bro. What the fuck? I mean, the napkins don't really matter. It's just it's the other shit. It's not. This is even about the napkins. Yeah, isn't legitimately distressing. But the thing is, Mr. Lucas seems to have a history of suing fast food joints. Oh. I'm gonna sue. That that'll teach you. Lawyer up, blue boy, because I'm going to sue you all. He's reportedly sued Jack in the Box oh. twice and also brought suits against Walmart and Denny's.
Number okay, eight, well, an age by any number. Shakespeare once- I believe Denny's, though. I do believe the Denny's thing happened. He's right about Denny's. That place is not kind. Wrote, a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Does that work for ages, too? A Dutch man named Emil Rattelbond hoped to legally change his birthday from 1949 to 1969. Quote, officially making him 20 years younger. I so you want seven. to identify 17 years yeah, because, you know, Sorry, I feel 26. like that. He wished ah, to change okay. his birthday to avoid age-based discrimination right. and to find more success on Tinder. No I'm woman's going to believe you're 42, Emil, are they? Why not? Are you eh? jealous? Crossing the boundary okay. from hilarious to offensive, Rattlebond compared great. the situation to being transgender, asking, quote, We live in a time when you can change your name and change your gender. Why can't I decide my own age? I'm more mad at them for putting him on TV. The court right? eventually dismissed the lawsuit, stating, like, in more official terms, that this people is their can't fault. just change their ages. It's like a Dr. Phil way. moment, you know? <laughs> what happened? That I lost. I lost the battle, but I'm going to win the yeah, war. He's... Number seven, the Recording Industry Association of America v. Walton. We must promise them that new technology and distribution will pay them fairly. The RIAA is known for being bloodthirsty creatures, okay. and not even the deceased can escape its wrath. According to the RIAA, music power is the biggest reason revenue in that industry has declined from over 14 billion dollars back in 99 to less than half that now proof well, they yeah. attempted to sue an 83 year old woman for making 700 songs publicly available on the internet unfortunately for <laughs> all involved they sued her following her death oh and no. the filed lawsuit came after her daughter responded to a warning letter with a copy of her mother's death certificate to oh RIAA no Hi guys, but we're pretty sure you're not winning this one. The Record Industry Association of America needs a guide dog. They cannot tell the difference between a uh, pirate and someone who's uh, operating a lemonade. Dude, the RAA was so scary back in the day. I had Napster. I would download like five songs overnight. That shit was so scary when they started uh like tracking people down. You heard stories about people losing everything for downloading a fucking Switchfoot song or something. It was so weird. Or like Nelly Furtado. It was crazy. Stan. Number six, Heckard v. Jordan and Heckard v. Nike. Who's Heckard? Jordan from Nike. In this case of celebrity lookalike versus a celebrity, and the company that made said celebrity famous, an African-American man from Portland, Oregon named <laughs> Alan Heckert sued both NBA star Michael Jordan and Nike for $416 million each. Bro. Why? Heckert was tired of all the emotional pain and injury he was supposedly suffering from being constantly mistaken for the ex-Chicago Bulls player whenever he was out in public. I know he just got that ear pierced, bro. I know he that ear piercing was a was a late decision. I'm positive on that. <laughs> Emotional distress. Well, that's I that's mean, funny. things could be worse. Yeah, if I'm playing basketball and people think I'm Michael Jordan, that seems like it's pretty awesome. I don't need $832 million to go along with that. Their expectations really go up, though. Though they differ in age and height, Heckard and Jordan both... Well, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If you were walking on the street, maybe... I don't, like, I, obviously not here. No, it's not close. <laughs> it's not close. I was going to say they have the same mustache, but they don't. <laughs> okay, it's not close. <laughs> both have shaved heads and wear a single earring. They are both bald, though. They are definitely both bald. Yet one's a famous athlete and the other's an airport shuttle driver with a criminal record. In the end, Heckert dropped the suit before going to trial and without being given any money. Did everyone get mad at you? Okay, no. maybe not. Worse. Everyone was real nice about it. Number five, Overton v. Anheuser-Busch. Guys, hurry up! 
The magic bridge is back! Beer is certainly delicious, there's no denying that. But we'd be hard pressed Opium. to find anyone who believes that it has magical powers. However, Richard Overton was certainly fooled I know as a he lot sued of people Bud Light in 1991 the for their false and misleading advertisement. Bro, stop! Thrust your pelvis to the sky. Stop! Exhale, release. Stop! That's good. In their commercials, male drinkers are often in tropical settings surrounded by gorgeous women. What Overton's the fuck? lawsuit concluded that those particular representations of life after drinking the beer were I'm gonna get in untrue. trouble. And therefore, that would fall under false advertisement. I'll be right back. So how do you feel about back hair? His case was suitably dismissed. Interestingly, Overton doesn't drink alcohol. He filed what? a lawsuit when his young kids became entranced by Bud's spokesdog, Spuds McKenzie. But you really cooking that. All right. Bud Light had a spokesdog named Spuds McKenzie? I thought that was just a Futurama joke. I didn't know that. I only knew about slurms. Holy shit. That's crazy. Women wham wham wazzle. <laughs> I had no idea. Number four, the fifty-four million dollar pants. That's amazing. You would think I'm all partied out, man. <laughs> judge would know the difference between legitimate you guys go and on ahead. lawsuits. Judge Roy Pearson sued the owners you, of Florida, a Washington Matt. dry cleaners for supposedly losing his pants. A Korean immigrant family, the Chungs, who own a Washington D.C. dry cleaners, have spent the last two years fighting a customer. A judge. According to Pearson, the cleaners had violated their quote satisfaction guaranteed sign and caused him mental anguish. Despite bro, the owners the agreeing to anguish. twelve thousand dollars in legal compensation, always with the mental Pearson anguish, bro. Offer, ensued for over fifty million dollars. What could Did he possibly win? be logical about a fifty-four million dollar pair of pants? Ensued for over fifty million dollars. He should have taken that twelve grand. Instead, Damn. he lost both the case and his job, as no one wanted Bruh. to work with a judge who frivolously sued people over pants. The owners of the dry That's cleaners tough. later recovered their exorbitant legal costs through fundraising. You had plenty of opportunities to resolve this. Bro. They even gave you your pants back, but you wouldn't take it, and so you get nothing. Now, all of this success became an issue for the mayor of a city called Batman. <laughs> located in Turkey. In his bat crap crazy lawsuit, Hussein Kalkan made plans to sue Warner Brothers and director his bat crap crazy law The city of Batman. Lawsuit, Hussein Kalkan made plans to sue Warner Brothers and director Christopher Nolan for using the name Batman without the city's permission. As if the capital of Batman Not a bad idea. the rights to the name. Not a to bad idea. Worse, Kalkan even blamed the movie for a rise of unsolved murder to Rosenberg, the Harwood, and Google. Learn to get directions with the new Google Maps. Google Maps. Bro, this guy drove into the lake. <laughs> I guarantee it. Is an astounding creation. This guy drove into a lake. directions to almost anywhere in the world. However, the web mapping service doesn't account for cars. Lauren Rosenberg was following Google's walking directions, which <laughs> led her onto a busy highway with no sidewalks. She intelligently kept right on following the highway and was subsequently hit by a car. Okay, As a result, mind. she sued both Google and the driver, Patrick Harwood, for $100,000, but her claims Modest. were ultimately dismissed. We don't think Google needs the explicit statement of please don't walk into moving cars on their directions, but Damn! apparently they do. Oh, and by the way, it was nighttime when Rosenberg ventured out onto this highway. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel mm. and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. What's number one? The number one most ridiculous lawsuit of all time. The incident? What do you mean me versus Coney? I have caused you no mental anguish on this stream. You have the option to be notified Allegedly. for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Bite of 87 will make a banger lawsuit. They probably did that, right? That's probably in the lore, right? 
Number one, watch the sizzle. Applebee's new sizzling entrees aren't just a show. A man named Hiram Jimenez visited a New Jersey Applebee's with his brother and ordered some delicious steak fajitas. Uh -huh. After receiving the literally sizzling hot plate, yeah. Jimenez bowed over his food to pray. And that's when some grease popped and hit him in the face. Oh! This resulted in a further comedy of errors, which saw Jimenez knocking the hot food into his lap, losing his glasses, and bumping his elbow on the table. Despite suffering no serious injuries, Jimenez sued the restaurant for negligence. The court threw his case out, Mental claiming that Jimenez anguish. shouldn't have placed his face directly over sizzling food. The court saying that a New Jersey man can't sue Applebee's after he burned himself over a plate of fajitas. Do you agree with our pick? This was a bad video. This was a bad movie. I do not agree with your picks. I do not agree with your picks. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Let's watch another to make up for it. Shut up. I'm going to bed. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hey, prime check, huh? Huh? I haven't said it all night. I haven't asked for it. Now's the time. Cash it in. Cash it in. Hand it over. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, hand over. If you got a Prime, look below the stream. Prime Gaming's a free sub that you have to any chance. Thank you, Ark of Justice. Um, thank you. Ah. Uh, thank you. One more, please. Ah. Uh, I'm not putting my tongue out. You guys are weird. Ah. Uh, Sue Watch Mojo. <laughs> Thank you, Paxton. Um, 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 um. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Yo-Yo Bros. Um, 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 um. Delicious. Thank you, This Is Victory. Thank you guys for the primes. Thank you. Mm, I'm so full. So good in my stomach. Uh, Stream tomorrow. Tomorrow's gameplay. Uh, I think tomorrow we're going to play Babel Royale because I've been wanting to do that. And I do believe uh, we're going to be playing some Mario Party. With some friends. Thank you, Anonymous Gifter. Whoever you are. So I think we're going to be playing some games. I actually have to do a Fall Guys stream soon. I have a sponsor stream, and I think it's going to be Fall Guys. So look out for that. Probably maybe Sunday. Maybe next week. We'll see. Uh, who are we going to raid? Coney is going to get destroyed in Mario Party. Shut up. No. Never ever. Thank you, Space Animals, for the Tier 1. Big thank you. Rady E. Bro. Fine. You know why? Because I think he's playing Mario Party with me tomorrow. He's playing uh, Dark Souls right now. I was going to raid uh, Lithero. Lithero? Lithero. I'll do it tomorrow if he's on. That's my guy. Thank you, Sub Senpai. Thank you guys so much for the primes and the subs. 1952. Good year. Good year. Oh, wait, no, I'm at 1962. Even better year. Just hasn't updated yet. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. He will never pronounce Lithero correctly. I always thought it was Lithero. And then he said it Lithero. I don't know. Whatever. All right, I'm going to bed. I'll see you guys soon. Uh, stream tomorrow. Bye. How I love this pretty bed. Now I'll rest my weary head. Good night.